If this is your first time or your usual time with us, then welcome to Xbox Era. We provide a platform for the Xbox community from our forums and Discord, our main site with the latest news and reviews, and our podcasts like the Xbox Era podcast and You Have Me at Halo. We exist, our focus on the Xbox platform front and center because so many media publications out there don't. We love this community and believe Xbox really can be the very best place to play. If you love what we do, help us. You can join as a YouTube member, or even better, subscribe to us on Patreon. You help us grow and get plenty of perks to enjoy as a token of our appreciation. Just head to patreon.com forward slash Xbox Era. And as always, thanks for sticking around. The Xbox Era podcast is brought to you by executive producers Top, Horn Raptor and Lopple. Hello, friends, and welcome to episode 191 of the Xbox Hero podcast. This week, the aforementioned Grubsmas Christmas Special Tacular. Am I getting this right? <laughs> yes. um, I, I shouldn't be here, but I am. Um, like a bad penny, I'll always turn up. But you're, you're watching, as always, uh, our, our weekly podcast. And as always, we thank you for your support. If you love what we do and you want to support us directly, you can do so by heading to patreon.com forward slash Xbox Era or becoming a YouTube member right here. Um, well, gentlemen, it's Jeff Grubb. It's Howdy. special Nick. It's Christmas time. Merry this is new for me. This is the first time I've got to do one of these. You know, like... Do they know it's yes. Grubmas time at all? <laughs> they do by gifting 10 memberships. Mohamed Sherez. Yes. Thank you. Wow. Hey, Sherez. Shout out, Mo. Wow. Look at that. Last Straight in. Grubsmas. I, <laughs> yeah. I do feel like I'm infringing a little bit on, on you two's time. So, you know, no, yeah, I, I but... mentioned this beforehand. I am, I am sick, so you being here will help take some pressure off me, and I really appreciate yes. that. And, and Make... really, it's just making sure Mike Minotti's not here. That's all that matters. <laughs> that's, all, that's, that's all that matters to me. <laughs> You've had enough of dealing with that asshole every time you have to go yeah, on I camera. Was, I thought it was Scott Free the rest of the year. <laughs> I love it. Well, look, I know you're poorly, so we appreciate you jumping on, right? Um, it's an annual tradition, and even even illness can't step in the way of that. No way. Yes, very appreciated. As always, though, we, we start the show, and it's been a, a week of, frankly, probably the craziest week in video games of 2023. Who would yeah. have thought that would sneak in the week before Christmas? But it has. Pretty um, much. But before we dive into all of that, have you guys actually been playing any video games? Have you been laying on the sofa with a thermometer and a big blanket around you? Basically, yeah, I got a I got a big bean bag in the family room, and I've been laying on there. And I was finished. I was wrapping up Super Mario RPG, and really, uh, really just still loving that game. Um, it's one that like I never felt I had to get through because it's a game I've played so many times. Uh, so it's always just a treat when I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go play that for an hour, and I'm getting near the end of it now, and I'm still really, really enjoying it. Yeah, Nick, Nick's a, obviously is a Nintendo resident super fan. I haven't heard you wax lyrical about Mario RPG. Is that me? I'm, I'm yeah. not interested in it. <gasps> oh, the, funny story. My, my only, <laughs> Nintendo my, sent my Xbox own. era a copy of Super Mario RPG, and I've been playing it, and it's fun. I've taken three yeah. games from them. Oh, yeah. They sent me Wonder, RPG, and Tears of the Kingdom. They love us. I hate that their codes aren't region free. I know. I absolutely hate that their codes aren't region. Switch to maybe they'll change it, change it up. That's Nintendo. Know. My only claim, my only claim to Super Mario RPG is that I knew about that like six months ago, and after it was revealed, I sent a message to Mike. I was like, "Look at this DM." He's like, "Dude, you had that there, and you said nothing all this time." <laughs> I'm like, I totally forgot. I completely <laughs> forgot about it. 
like, man, why didn't you tell us earlier? I'm like, shit, bro. I, I just completely forgot it existed. Yeah, it's it's been a lot of fun though. It's uh, you know, it's it's a one to one remake for the most part. Uh, but that's good because that's a, a really great game from the Super Nintendo era. And so just giving it that new coat of 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 modern day graphics is it goes a long way. And then mm. it's just I, I'm they did make it maybe a little bit too too easy uh, in parts, but I, I'm not like looking for a really uh, uh, oh something like oh uh, an RPG. It's going to be really troublesome in these fights that go on for a long time. It actually just goes so fast, and you're jumping from one scene to the next that there's something really nice about that as well. So been enjoying that, and then I've been like keep eyeing Avatar. I want to spend more time with Avatar, but I've only been able to play that a little bit this week. That's actually a surprisingly fun game. Yeah. yeah it's not bad. I, I, I was one of the higher sure. reviews giving it an 8.8. I think it's a lot of people just call it Far Cry, but I do think it's it's definitely it's, more than that cuz it's, it's they a, thought about it more than just like slapping Avatar on Far Cry, right? They yeah, think it's yeah, a different it's engine too. It really yeah. feels differently and I think it feels a lot better. I mean, obviously you're you're a 14 foot tall cat, so it, you're going to feel yeah. pretty different, but it's <laughs> and that, in the game, I'm also a foot 14 true. foot tall cat. Yeah. So in both, both places, yeah. You're unique. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's a weird one because, yeah, a lot of people have written it off as this kind of like, oh, it's another Ubisoft template copy paste extravaganza. And I'm like, there's no climb the towers to get visualization. It's a lot more exploratory in terms of how it directs you. It's a lot more in the wild kind of thing. And it's probably one of the most visually impressive games of the entire year. Surprising um, how good it looks. Yeah. Snowdrop like, I, is wow. The engine. It's like in the division, yeah. it looked great and seeing it in something different like this. And yeah, it's it's gonna be the Splinter Cell is remake Mass engine too. Yeah, is Massive the one doing the um the uh, Star outlaws. Wars? Yep. They outlaws, are. right? And is that Snowdrop? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Man, that's cool. That's exciting. And it is because mm -hmm. it, it's a competent first person shooter avatar in and of itself. Like it feels yeah. nice to play. Um, comparatively to type Far Cry. So, yeah, I think it's an underrated uh, title that a lot of people just be like, mm, I'm just going to write mm -hmm. it off because it's another Ubisoft open world. But, yeah, even I'm enjoying it. And I hate open world. Snowdrop Good. seems oh, um, really versatile because it's also using the Beyond Good and Evil 2 ship flying from land into space tech in in the Star Wars game. So it's um, it'll be the first right, time we see yeah. anything from Beyond Good and Evil 2. A little bit of wow. tech. Jesus. <laughs> Basically, the real Beyond Good and Evil 2 is finally here. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Nick? What have you, what have you been playing in the run-up to in, Christmas? In a Grubsmas miracle, you'll be very proud of me. I've actually played two new games this week. <laughs> Get the fuck uh, out of town. <laughs> two new games. So I have been playing a game. <laughs> it's not new, but it's called Masupalami. Who bad venture? Do you remember? You guys, remember the cartoon Masupalami? Vaguely, <laughs> those are just sounds that you're saying. Those are barely <laughs> do, words. Do you not remember Masupalami? I think this was something that might be a bit regional for you, bro. No, I no, remember mate. it. I grew no. up with it. Really? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've heard of it, but I don't think it ever aired over here. I didn't watch it when I was a kid. Oh yeah, Masupalami was pretty funny, and they, they, I, I was browsing the Xbox store the other day, and. I saw Masupalami for six bucks and saw the style okay. of game it was. I don't know it's what you're a... saying. I still don't know what you're saying. Can you sound it out slowly for me? <laughs> Masupalami. So like Masupio, Masupio. but Mas Masupalami. Okay. Okay. I right. still don't um, recognize it, but fair enough. Thank you. Um, but yeah, it's basically just a 2D platformer, like a Mario clone type of thing. And it, it's a oh, Look at game. this guy. This guy looks like a pervert. I love him. It's a it's a like nineteen fifties French comic book that became a cartoon in the nineties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew I could I knew it was French just by looking at it. Look mm -hmm. at this fucker. Yeah, yeah. It's cool. Um and, and the game is again, it's a kid's game first, but it's just aping a lot of Mario's foundations here. Um with a little bit of Donkey Kong Country to it. Um and it's actually okay for six bucks. It's on sale. I'm, you know, and I bought a copy, gifted a copy to my daughter, and she's trying to get into it, and she's enjoying herself. It's actually not too bad. Again, very like it doesn't do anything revolutionary. It's it's just taking little bits and pieces from all the platformers you've loved and known before, and just chucking it into a Masupalami game. Um, it's okay. I check it out. I, you know, I love a platformer. I tried. I tried playing. Um, 
ukulele and the impossible layer the 2d platformer mm -hmm. for ukulele and i just I'm, I'm like very early on and i'm it's just pushing me away really fast i don't know if i love the way it feels uh and mm -hmm. i think it's got a bit of a you know slow start and that, again this is like the f very beginning of the game but i'm like oh i could i just go play suica game because i got on, on sale on the switch and i'm like yeah. i'll just go play suica, uh, suica game I'm, I'm really enjoying that's that watermelon you know threes mm -hmm. physics game and that's surprisingly did click would be really hard uh and and ukulele just is not clicking at all and so I'm like i'll have to yeah. force myself to play more of it to see if eventually it'll click and i'm not in the mood to do that right now especially feeling sick yeah yeah fair enough well i mean if i know you're trying to get your kids into the games as well all right my super lobby might be one they might enjoy it's got a god mode so you can just set it oh to, that's always fantastic so they, okay yeah so they can't die and that's what that's what my daughter's done she's just turned that's it on so she can just play learn the <laughs> mechanics and not worry about dying which is i think that's great for kids look at this thing yeah. it's on steam right here okay i'm gonna grab it right now oh it's on yeah well i know it's it came out on switch and playstation i think I, I might be wrong but it may have come out on switch and playstation a touch earlier than xbox but i could be wrong on that um but uh, yeah if it's on steam yeah no i'm gonna grab it right um, now yeah it's a it's a cool enough little game uh now the other game i've been playing now this one just came out um and i got the code for it because i freaked out when i saw what it was and um, it is rock and racing off-road dx now Ooh. jeff and john and jesse should all theoretically be old enough to remember iron man off-road racing of course yeah. the, from, from the snes I used to, yeah God, i used to love those what's the those what's games. the what's the racer's name that was associated with iron man uh i can't remember his name but yes i played a ton of that yeah, it was it was Iron Man off road racing. Where it's, you're on those dirt tracks with yep. all the hill, kind of like Excite bike, but the that isometric view, whatever it is. This is this is channeling the energy of the Iron Man off road game. It's it's ID at Xbox, but it feels more like a creator's collection game. Like our friend Omega Rally Champ, our friend Anorexic that made Omega Rally Championship, which is part of the creator's collection. This feels more like a game made for that, Ooh. that somehow they've got their way into ID at Xbox. Um, look, it, it's okay. I, I was somewhat disappointed by how it feels. It's very slippery and slidey and the physics can get very, very funny on you and cars get caught on each other, which completely screws you up. Um, there's some odd bugs here and there, like you you finish if you finish first in a race just like in mario kart in the next race you're meant to start in pole position for some reason on the first cup that i was playing i finished first in my second race and then in the third race started in second instead of pole mm. position it's just weird little stuff like that it's surprisingly difficult the the, the like it's easier to win on a track that has a lot of turns. Somehow the turns seem to really screw up the AI. So if you've got a track that doesn't have a lot of turns, it's extremely difficult to win. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, I think it's only like 12 bucks or something. If you need a fix that's a spiritual successor to Ironman Off-Road Racing, give it a go. Um there's something there maybe if the dev has another crack at it with a sequel and can sort of nail the feel a bit better but yeah it's it's very very if, if you care about how a game feels like i do uh, yeah this is this know. is what this... happens to me all the time nick because i uh get excited about a spiritual successor to one of like one of my yeah. games you know one of those games i played yeah, at, yeah. when i was younger i'm like all right we're going back here we are and nine out of ten times they end up not feeling right and yeah. I always, I'm nine out of 10 times, I'm disappointed. It's uh, yeah. it's a bomb. And it's like, you know, oh, oh, I, maybe then it's it's still not for me. That's fine. Other people have other expectations for these things. But I expect it to feel a certain way. And yeah. that's half the battle of of, of bringing yep. back these things. So that's a little bit of a bummer to hear. But I, I do like Iron Man Off-Road Racing. That's every time I was in the arcade oh. and I would see the, the, the arcade Love cabinet, it. the steering wheels, and then going yep. in there and trying to control the little isometric guy with the steering wheel. It's like, it was so much fun and weird, oh. uh, pretty good. And it's it's Ivan Stewart. That's the name I was thinking of. Iron, Ivan uh, Iron Man Stewart's right. Super Off-Road Racing. That's the one I was yes. always thinking about. It's funny Love hearing it. you talk about how games feel. Like I... 
despite the fact having everything to play, like everything under the sun. I've got Avatar, which I've been, I only really want to play on PC as much as I've got the Xbox save. I've got like 80 hours on PC and there's no cross save. So I'm like, I can't bring myself to start again on Xbox. I've got Jedi Survivor to play through. I've Same. got Immortals Avium or Vavium to mm. play through. I started that up and I'm bouncing between all of these games, right? I know. And I don't know what it is right now, but nothing is like grabbing me and i'm looking grabbing, through my grabbing. library of, mm. of of older games and i'm like of games i've already completed and there's this part of me that wishes i could literally erase my memory of playing or with the wisps for the first time yeah or yeah. or death's door or or uh, tunic and just being like boop and just enjoying the discovery again because nothing like and it's weird this year everyone's talked about how amazing it's been for games terrible for creators but amazing for us game consumers loads and loads of stuff to play but i actually feel a little bit left out in the cold because the majority of it has been these absolutely gargantuan rpgs like like baldur's gate and and it's just i'm just i'm, I'm a little bit tired i'm looking forward to you know i saw nirvana noir was announced for 2024 like that's more up my alley. i can curate cool. you shorter experiences if you'd like there have been plenty well, it's, yeah also have you played steam world dig 2 that's if you're looking for one of those exploration games yes. I, can i just recommend that mm -hmm. uh, go okay. give that a shot because it's like it's shorter it's got a great loop uh go for that okay i'll go check it out i did download because i saw it was on sale uh for six quid max paying three um sure. and then i loaded it up and i played that level and it, man i was struggling like nick would be nothing no cutscene skipping and man those mm. cutscenes are long and i'm like just let me play mm. just let me shoot people in the face and i just i gave up so yeah, Immortals of Avium. I've I've played like the first few levels. I, I don't know how I feel about this game. Like I admire the attempt at this new IP in this new world, and in some ways the production quality is interesting and 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 adventurous and ambitious, but it doesn't feel right to play. Yeah. Like, it's a PC you... game. It is really good on mouse and keyboard. And when I tried on console, I was like oh no so similar to arcane's efforts right and i know lo lots of fans of arcane right but if you play any arcane first person shooter on console they don't feel right the prey incredible game doesn't feel right you know console. the one that does mm. now redfall now yeah redfall now they fixed it it actually feels like a, a proper first person shooter for the first time yeah. from them yeah so roll on 2024 i say give me more of what i like but, uh, I want yeah. Prince of Persia. Yeah, I, that's, just want, the, I just that's want the first Prince one of the year. That yeah, that's yeah. honestly, maybe you could just wait oh. till that because that's going to scratch the itch of what oh. you're talking about. God, I can't wait have, for have Prince of Persia. Have you guys played it? Have you touched it at all? I am the one who Jesse got has. to. Those yeah. two have. Oh, yeah, John have. hasn't? Oh, no, I, no, thought, I haven't. I thought John had. No, you're right on your it's, mic now, Nick. Let me turn you down. Yeah, it's it's, it's phenomenal. so good. Yes. Were you playing over cloud too? Uh, I missed out on, on that preview mm -hmm. thing. I set it up and then I was like, I am too busy actually setting up for our game of the year when our, we were traveling. It was like the mm -hmm. next week and I'm like, I got too many things to deal with. I played it at Summer Game Fest uh, yep. um, and I played it both on PC and it was great because it was like uh, Mike on one side and Patrick Klepik on the other side. And we were all kind of like, you know, racing and trying to show off mm -hmm. and the PR person's like, oh, aren't you guys so good? And I'm like, yeah, we are. <laughs> I'm like pulling up our purchase all high. Um, uh, but it was like, uh, it's, it's a really fantastic game. And then I played it on switch uh, 60 frames per second. Like they just had them sitting mm -hmm. on the couch in like their waiting area of for summer game fest of uh, the Ubisoft thing. And I just started playing it there. I'm like, it feels great on the switch. So like it gave me a lot of hope that this thing's just going to be solid through and through yeah. mm -hmm. uh, the team seems super competent and confident about what they're working on. So yeah, that's my number one game, like first game of 2024 that I'm most looking it forward to. It is up for review request on their, uh, on their press site. I, yeah, I was. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna go at request for that. They, we probably get that like as soon as we get back next year, right? I bet yeah, we get yeah. that like the first week when we get back. So yeah, I look to that. yeah, I can tell you. Okay, cool. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't now, wait. It's gonna be a great game. Like I, I could already sense. Oh. Like my spidey sense is tingling. Chunky it's Metroidvania. Just, it's like. Oof. Yeah, it's just like Ubisoft's Metroid Dread, and I'm just like, oh God, please give me that because yep. Metroid Dread was fucking ridiculous. It was, perfect, it was yeah. just amazing. Yeah. Um, oh, I, I can't get enough of those. Like Ori, Dread. Like, just they're so bloody good. Like, just I, I'm, I'm, I'm like in the same place where I'm like thinking about, hey, I want to be playing those kinds of games right now. Yeah. And I yeah. was like thinking about replaying Metroid Dread or Ori or something like that. And yeah, so I'm like kind of like poking around a little bit. But yeah, uh, like Steamroll Dig Two 
Ori. Uh, um, I'll go uh, all check these out Steam World Dig. Yeah, definitely. I just I love Steam World. Steam World Dig is very good. Steam World Dig Two is incredible. Okay, all right, noted, noted. Now I have to stop because we've got a, a bunch of super chats. Uh, yes, we do. Um, <laughs> let's have a look. We've got Don Johnston uh with a 15 dollar australian super chat that's like, that's like two bucks pounds. for you guys that's like two bucks for Whoa. you guys <laughs> um we makeshift games have a demo of our game in time 2024 because before my father tragically died in a car crash oh apologies sorry about this that. is this a joke like this, john johnson is, is not serious yeah this is not a serious really? thing yeah oh he god i thought he, i thought he was read, for read real <laughs> He said, follow your dreams. He also said, slow down. You're driving too fast. Merry Xmas. Oh, my God. I thought he was being serious. I'm like, oh, God, that's horrible. Well, in that case, I'm glad his dad is dead. He's going to joke around about it. This is where he comes back with another super chat. Oh, he, I wasn't joking. Don't he, 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 he. <laughs> oh, shit. I really was driving God. way too fast. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, Muhammad Sherez, the man who continues to give us super chats after our show's finished. Um, Merry Grubsmas. Thanks for the Xbox era team for the amazing year. Big up Jeff and the amazing Nick. Enjoy the membership gifts. Thanks very much. I see why Nick likes him so much. He licks Nick's butt all the time. He loves him. Constantly telling him he's the sexiest member. And of course, Nick's like, yeah, of course. Well, I mean, Uh, Grubs here. When when you have evidence. What do you mean? Grubs here is right on screen. Since when did Jeff not find me attractive? Oh yeah, there's never been a moment where that hasn't That's been right. true. Like, of course. hello, of course. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> um, big puppy senpai, member for three months. Uh, happy holidays, compadres, friends, aka friends, and shout out to Nick for the clutch on Xbox Two yesterday. Oh my god, I did a Jeff Grub, and I saved uh, Randall for my team. Let it go, <laughs> Xbox Two. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so Rand put out a tweet. Sorry, guys, got to cancel Xbox Two, right? Because Jez couldn't jump on. So I, put to, I sort of half jokingly replied saying, "Hey," because I was lying in bed. I'm like, "Do you want me to get out of bed and we'll do Xbox Two? And people are like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." And I, I, I DM'd Rand. I'm like, "Look, seriously, do you... no." What did I say? No, he he DM'd me later after that and he's like do you want to do the show i'm like oh look i had a family thing on today but i'll ask my wife and i'll see what she says so i did ask my wife and i sold her on the the idea that rand was going to have to cancel his show blah 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 i want to help him out just like jeff did for me four years ago and my wife's like okay fine go for it knock yourself out so i said to rand i'm in let's do it xbox two so John and I and Jesse are doing the movie podcast yesterday. And we're getting to the end of the show. We've been going for about an hour 15. And John's like, so it seems you're doing Xbox 2 with Cognito as well. What? Oh. And Jez. And he goes, and he goes, and Jez. <laughs> oh my God, what? So what was I tapped on the shoulder for? <laughs> was... What's going on? It would be like me when you help me out with Grubsmas. It would be like me saying, oh, Jeff, can you help me out? And you go, yeah, no worries. And then all of a sudden you join and John's on. Yeah. yeah. So you're like, like, hold on a second. (laughs) Ah, That Xbox Two podcast seems like a real mess, if you ask me. (laughs) 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 But no, we had a a good time. Went for four hours. Oh, Oh, well, let's not do that today. Let's not do that today. So it's oh, yes. it's worth mentioning uh, just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, this week on Xbox Series was, was Xbox Series Game of the Year week, so there was multiple top ten lists, and then we get to enjoy. Yes. For those of the video team that made videos, like myself, Ursul, Nick, uh, Jesse, yeah, there are some videos out there. That, oh my god, no Baldur's Gate three in this list. You guys suck. And it's like, hey, it's just a personal list. Um, there's Have also you seen our- me playing Baldur's Gate three. No, I don't. And it's I don't it's literally it's been <laughs> we're an Xbox focus site and it's been on Xbox for ten days and it's like 150 hours long. So, yeah, like <laughs> it's a busy time of year. Um, but our, all of our top tens, including our overall staff top ten, are out there on the channel. So feel free to go check them out. None um, of my Nintendo games are in there. You, you, Super no, Mario Wonder was number 10. eleven. 
for the staff. It was <laughs> I, literally I, one point behind. You were the only person who it was on two lists. So it was in my like top 20, 25, but it was on yours and I think it was Genghis number or two for else. me. Yeah. The, and it that's was how it almost by made Alan it. Wake. Yeah. Yeah, it was beaten by Alan Wake. Alan, no, oh, Alan Wake. My God, what a game! Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, yeah, so go check them out if you want to. If you want to have a, a general overview of all the different staffs, thoughts, and favorites of the year, bit of a, 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 a crazy year, regardless. So everyone's got something to to chew down on. Um, and then if we look at coming into next year, we've got obviously Prince of Persia: The Lost Crown review will be oh. will be dropping at some point before launch, um, as well as some hardware reviews. And a little look at what Xbox is going to be bringing in 2024 itself, um, which will be fun. So, yeah, it'd be a nice quiet start to the year, hopefully. But then we're going to ramp things up. And then we'll get into the news, I suppose. And, you know, I'm going to but do you things. Know, cool. I, I know I know. Jeff's not feeling great. What might cheer super him super unfortunate. You know, you know what he needs. <laughs> I, I don't know how quickly control can ship. Maybe Jesse can drive over there and bring him some. Jeff, Jeff needs to get himself some oh, control. Oh, yeah, that's what I need. That's actually been I'm my whole problem. <clears throat> yeah, some Fruity Flakes control. Yeah. He- head on over to drinkcontrol.com forward slash Xbox era and use our code for 10% off, mate. And, you know, in a first, I mean, Jesse's already had these, but I've just got them. These, mate, these bars, look mm. at that. Magic charms. Got some lucky charms inside the bar there. Hoo-hoo boy can't wait well, to give I, that a go later speaking of uh things that i do want to make sure jeff gets jeff uh two years ago you very kindly i mean well rewind you helped xbox Hero when it was just starting out you jumped on our podcast mm. when we were a bunch of nobodies we still are but you still helped out right um mm. you've always been a friend to the, to the channel site you helped us with the celebrating 20 years of xbox book yeah i do don't so. think you you backed it but Obviously, you did contribute, and I would like to make That's sure in a lot of ways. that you you get a copy. So when you have a minute, no rush. I'll, I won't be sending you before that. New Year, but just drop us your address in like uh, Discord or something, and I will ping one across and to you. You, you much like, like Phil Spencer, Spencer. <laughs> yeah, much like Phil Spencer, you can have a book in the background if you There's want because it was on his shelf. On the shelf, oh, just like really? Phil. Mm-hmm. That's fantastic. Yeah, he's got okay. it. He's got it on his shelf. Yeah, it's great. That was very cool. And it's cool, actually yeah. on display in uh, in Redmond's uh, B building at the That's awesome. team. It is cool. It yeah, is very cool. I yes, we're going to do it again for the 360. So we're going to presume that you're on board for that. because Oh, well, without a doubt, be. yes. There's a lot more to say, I think, about the 360 as well. Like, that's a, a very nostalgic console. Um, so, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good times. Good I'm, times. I've been using the 360 a lot uh, the last couple of weeks because I'm playing uh, oh, Ride right? to Hell Retribution for our bad game <laughs> show. And uh, oh, oh, oh. Uh, it, it's like it, it stinks a little bit because you go back to use the 360 and it's like, oh, it's not what I think about when I think about the 360 anymore. It's not yes. the blades. It's like I, I pop up and here's an avatar and all this other yeah. stuff. But man, 360 was a very good console. Very oh, good. It's amazing. The golden era, in my opinion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. New Super Chat next. Yeah, super chat from Red. You don't, you don't have to read it, this one. This is it. It's my favorite person, Grub. Can't believe he leaked the Switch Two <laughs> announcement for today. That and Nick, so you didn't tell the story one hundred percent accurate. But thank you for coming on. I didn't <laughs> lie. I, I wanted to help you out. I legitimately wanted to help you out. And then all of a sudden, the others were there. And I, he, I felt look, like Rand. Rand knows you don't. You're a man that doesn't like to share the spotlight, right? I mean, this is. Factually accurate. No. I, think my, I think my advice to you at the time was, well, if everyone's there, man, like, and you, and you know, go score some brownie points with the wife. Go say, hey, yeah, John worry, told me to bail on you. <laughs> John told me to bail on you, and I said, well, I can't do that. I said I'd be on. I can't bail. But and he didn't. You know, four hours. I, I wanted to, you know, uh, return. You know, Jeff helped me all those years ago. I wanted Pay to do the same for someone yeah. else. Paying it, Pay it forward. forward. That's the yeah. bloody saying I was after. I, it, my, my it's old the brain season of lost goodwill, them. right? Like let's 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 embrace that mentality, as we talk about terrible people doing terrible things to development studios. And let's kick off the news in the wrong way round. We're going to talk about the really big thing first, which is obviously the big news item of the week, right? Insomniac. First, okay. Yeah, I'm going to talk about it first because I think that the, the audience want to know about it, and we're all here. And you know, before Jeff gets less lively as the illness overtakes him, this Good is idea. the time. This is the time. 
So um, much came out of this. It's so nuts. much came out of this. Yep. Like this is on the level of the FTC where all of Microsoft's shit was just splayed out for everyone to see, but then also had elements of the Capcom leak that had all the employee personal information. Although the Capcom leak also had our information as Capcom customers. Yep. Right. Which is probably a little bit next level. Yeah, even worse. Um, yes. yes. But man, this has been an interesting couple of days. Well since all the, this happened. There's a multiple there's multiple things, there's multiple levels to it. Yeah, there's the there's the the personal impacts of the, the staff at Insomniac, which is obviously mm-hmm. awful. And you know, yes. your hearts go out to them as, as individuals and as creators, it must suck, right? I've no doubt about that. There's the uh the unique like this is a secretive industry right i think we all know Mm -hmm. that the unique peek behind the curtain right at some of the stuff that has been reported on that isn't personal information um from plans and budgets and you know and all of that Mm. sort of jazz i think that's super interesting but then Mm. there's the third element which is this kind of i don't know what i don't know how i would word this delicately i suppose this kind of weird games journalists versus games journalists versus content creators versus fans eating themselves over what's ethically or morally right to talk about and it's really weird um and it's it's all caused a lot of drama i think across <laughs> across the internet this week I, I i i don't know which part of it i do find weird like a lot of us kind of knew like suspected that this sort of stuff was going on in the background but i think some of our um colleagues i guess you could say were a little taken aback like i i'm super proud of mvg when i saw mvg's tweet in response to greg i was like "Ooh, i didn't expect that i see him yeah i did not expect that from dim at all just to Mm go straight for the jugular i was like Good on you, Megale. It's like, it's like, it's like wow. I did not expect that from Dim. That was good. It's a weird one, right? Because you don't want to you don't want to be disparaging to other people and their opinions, right? And it, a lot of this seems to come from uh, you know, and a lot of people have pointed this out. Capcom leak was very similar, lots of personal information, including us. Arguably us, worse. Arguably, arguably worse, worse. Much, much broader. Um yes. and in that, yeah. No, no, let's all talk about it. But then we had, uh, and this I think is the the line, right? You have journalists, Bloomsburg, yeah, I would, you know, Tom Warren said, well, yeah, of course we're gonna we're gonna go report yeah. this. This is news. We're gonna tell our readers what's relevant. Of course, we're not yeah. gonna talk about the personal stuff. But this is this is a breaking story. It's happened. It's not you can't put the genie it's back news. in the bottle. And then you have more on the uh, media content creation side of video games journalism, which is these are personalities to entertain you and inform you rather than hmm. reporting the news who are like, no, we're kind of friends with them. So we're not going to talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> we we kind of like those thing, dudes. Though. <laughs> this is the thing though. They weren't that upfront. And what I, this is what I spoke about yesterday with right. Rand. People, most reasonable people, and I'm, I'm putting the caveat of reasonable because, you know, the Twitter psychos aren't reasonable. Most reasonable people respond to honesty. They do. They respond to honesty. Had uh, the folks at Kind of Funny just been straight up and said, look, guys, we know a lot of you aren't going to like it, but we feel a bit uncomfortable talking about this because we have a lot of friends at Insomniac. We're probably a little bit too close to this, so we're we're not going to talk about it. Yeah. That would have been the easier way to go around it. Yeah, yeah. It, it didn't help. It doesn't help that, uh, unlike the Capcom leak, and unlike a lot of the leaks, um, people from Insomniac were out there being like, and not just Insomniac, people, a lot of developers were out there. If you cover mm. this, you are complicit with the with the hackers yeah. and stuff like that. And I was seeing Which a lot of wrong. that. Yeah, and it was. Mm. Well, I mean, <clears throat> what, what, it's wrong. Whatever. They're allowed to feel that way, though. Yeah, of course. They they, they are allowed to feel that way, and it was. For me, I'm always on the side of I know a lot of times the stuff I do, developers don't love and that makes them uh, upset or they think that, oh, you know, mm-hmm. you shouldn't do that. And I've for a long time ago accepted like that's I you know what? 
I'm not going to try to argue with you. I'm not going to try to convince you that you should not be mad at me. You are allowed to be mad at me. You're allowed to, to disagree. And if that means we can't be friends, if that means that, uh, that that this is going to spoil some sort of human relationship, I've accepted that I am usually writing for the readers. I'm, I'm making stuff for mm. my viewers, and yeah. they are that's my first responsibility. And then if we get to be friends at industry events later, on top of that, that's a bonus, whatever. Um, and I think for a lot of people, there's a there's a calculus there where um, human beings are more important than video game news. And having having mm. those friends, and you know what, that's fine too. People are allowed to feel that way as well. But for me, it was very like, you know what, no, I've already had this out with myself a long time ago. Uh, if if a developer says that they think I'm scum now because I do this. So be it. I, I kind of, I'm not, it's I, your I, job. they are allowed to think I'm scum. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's... but like, because I know you, you are right when they say they're allowed to feel how they want to feel. Of course they can. They can feel however the hell they want to feel. But in terms of how they communicate that, in terms of how they exert influence, that's where yeah. I've got a little bit I, of an issue. Sure. But it's like, you know, it's emotionally charged and it's all happening at that moment and it's on Twitter right and everyone's like you know if we talked I, I guarantee if i had that conversation with those people in, in person at, yeah. at, at one of these events and i explained my position this has happened many times i explained my position and i'm like listen i write for the readers i cannot work for the developers i cannot even like begin mm. to think about how i'm going to cover stuff as a way of being a service to the developers that is not my yeah. job you have never paid me and i never want you to so yeah. Like we have to just keep this 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 uh, line of demarcation between ourselves, and that's mm. going to be important to me, and that's how I'm going to continue doing my job. And every time we have, I have this conversation with a the developer, they always end up with like, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Oh, that's okay. what I, they usually say. <laughs> that's what I would do as well. And it's it's like, yeah, it's like we're just do, we, everyone's doing their job here, and yeah, I'm not going to like gleefully like a stunt on you because you got hacked and stuff like that. But no. you know, I'm, I'm, yeah. And that's not really what's happening anywhere for the most part, except for psychos on Twitter. But like, yeah, I, 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 for the most part, developers are pretty understandable in that moment though, they can get pretty heated and I don't blame them because I, it's happens. It happens to me all the time. So I'm like, ah, let's just let them kind of air out what they, how they feel. And in a couple of days, we'll probably come back and things will have cooled off and I'll, I'll do my job. Like in that moment, as I, yeah. um, I as I've been doing it, and no one really said anything. No one really had any issues with it. Like it was, it was fine. Yeah, mm. it it it's it was weird. You know, I think Resetera was eating itself. There were so many bands in that uh, hilarious thread. Tom Warren, and Tom Tom Warren, mm. the evil one of those Twitter psychos we talked about. I don't know if you saw this, Jeff. He he just put like people were complaining the about most a tweet he harmless made. Harmless joke, and he was like. He he put he put in the Resetera thread. I just find it funny that I'm playing a, a PlayStation game on PC before you're playing it on PlayStation. <laughs> he literally just made a joke, right? And uh -huh. yes, but of course these people are like, oh, he's yeah. shown his colors, and yeah. they banned him. Scum. Resetera moderation Scum. banned him for console wars for a for a. Hey, model. Scum serves a purpose too. All right, like I, at least <laughs> it pro I'm pretty sure it does. I haven't looked it up, but I think Scum probably does something good for whatever ecosystem or whatever. So. <laughs> That I'm serving a purpose over here. Cracks me up. It's yeah. the funny but, thing with with Tom. People always say, "Oh, he's a, an Xbox shill." It's like, no, actually, in Xbox and in, in Microsoft, which is what he covers, they hate him because his entire yeah. job as the press isn't to be the PR arm that people are used to with so much coverage. His job is to be. It's more that antagonistic. I'm holding you accountable and getting information he, out that you don't want for your yeah, PR. Often role. very critical yeah. of Microsoft, uh, and rightly so. Mm. They deserve often a lot of criticism for some of their policies, particularly with Windows and other development side of things. You got to um, remember, though, in America, they're considered a person. The entire corporation. Yeah, that's right. so you got to be nice. To them. <laughs> don't be mean. Yeah. Don't be mean to mm. Microsoft. They might cry. Yeah, I just. Yeah, yeah. I, well, and that's the thing that that's where I think the line started to get blurred. Where I think some outlets forgot that they're not supposed to be a PR arm for these developers and publishers, and I think they may have lost sight of that a little bit in their love for Insomniac. Yeah, Insomniac's a fantastic developer, and. Yeah. Uh, a lot of their developers are really active on social media. Like, J is it James Stevenson? Yeah. Who who was on yep. Gaff, he's on Reset, he's on Twitter. Uh, I know he's in a couple of discords as well. Like, they're, they're, and that's what a lot of Xbox fans love about Xbox 
staff and developers. They love that they interact and they're in discords and they're on Twitter and that's what we love about them. So I, I understand uh, how much they love their friends at Insomniac. Right. And, and again, like people actually in the grand hierarchy of things are more important than video game news. But okay. but if you're going to make that your job, at a certain point, you got to take it seriously and you have to have a certain mm. sort of, uh, of guidelines and not everyone is going to do it the same way. And that, I'm not like even people decided not to cover it. They can make that decision too. whatever. There was pl plenty yeah. of people actually doing that. Uh, but hey, if you do that, though, and if you any and if you no matter what you decide to do, cover it, not cover it, you got to be open to the criticism. You got to hear it out. And mm. I, I think eventually we, we will get to the point where everyone will have like sort of a, a post-mortem on this and we'll look back and I bet a lot of opinions will change and probably yeah. err on the side of it's newsworthy. It should have been covered. Probably, probably should have been covered. Yeah. Yeah. And, we'll, and, we'll see I, when I, the next like, leak like, comes I listened to kind of funniest games daily yesterday and they talked about the like newsworthiness stuff out of the weeks. And they like said, Hey, well, we are going to talk about some of these things like the, um, I, I can't even remember what the details were, but it's like, yeah, they, they are talking about some of that stuff already. And I think they try to say, yeah, this is what we said from the beginning. We're going to talk about these tidbits that are clearly going to be news, but we wanted to avoid the, the human stuff. And it's like, yeah, that's what everyone was kind of doing. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's an interesting one. Go on, Nick. I was just going to say, I think a lot of it was probably, in the, especially for kind of funny, I think a lot of it was just in the heat of the moment, born from emotion. Yes. seeing that happen to their friends absolutely and they probably jumped the gun just a little bit out of that raw emotion yep um because yeah a couple of the clips i've seen since it seems like they've just cooled off a little bit and maybe realized oh well yeah all we're doing is talking about this thing that happened it we're not breaking public. down you know, it's out there yeah. as well it's like you yeah. are I, you know clearly a line is out there there is a line you should not cross if a, yes. if a hacker comes to you and hands you stuff that they illegally obtained and now you are colluding with the hacker to help them disseminate that information i would not do that yeah if it was a hacker congratulations yes. you've broken the law yes you've broken the law <laughs> exactly I, it's like i would i would begin talking to people to help those like get this person uh into that that would be the news story for me it's like yeah. here's a hacker mm -hmm. I, I helped catch this hacker once it's out there though it's like if the toothpaste is out of the tube the newsworthiness is easy to decide. This stuff affects how games are going to get made. It affects yeah. how we understand how these companies make decisions. And if that's not my job, I don't know what is. So yeah, yeah. And and speaking yeah. of the toothpaste that came out of the tube, I think one of the there's a couple of there's lots of interesting stuff. And as I said, the industry traditionally very very secretive about how the sausage is made, right? Um, but it was fascinating to me to see it, it, in black and white from the market leader, no less effectively mm. saying the way we make games now is no longer sustainable right in 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 blunt terms i mean it didn't say that in black and white but that's the which, result it was of their we pillars make, are outdated is how they yeah we yes. can make which, this which triple of us knew. yeah yeah we, we talk about this for years now yeah yeah like, we, 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 we knew they were heading that direction right because yeah you could do two god of wars like the new style and you're like well are they going to be able to do a third and grow even more that seems unlikely they're probably gonna have diminishing returns and that's they yeah. know mm. that clearly know that yeah and and mm. i think that that leads to where we've we've started to see these these smaller experiences like miles morales and like these add-on experiences you know sometimes developers are charging them. that's why sony seems to be remastering a lot of their games um and i think it's an in, it's, it's a weird moment i think again that's led to a lot of emotion mostly from the the twitter psychos and the fan fanboys of the industry out there that they're you know the precious market leader that they have so much love for is considering all of the all of the things actually that are a reality of game development and aren't just going to constantly invest millions of dollars into AAA bangers because if you miss once, <laughs> you've just lost a shit ton of money and you can't mm. make it back. And personally, for me, I'm reading this, I'm like, oh, thank God, can we get back to the world of more yeah. experimental, shorter yes. depth time? It doesn't have to look like like photo real anymore it like doesn't. can we be a little bit more experimental with our video games please? i i miss ps3 era sony yeah that is yeah. the sony i miss like they would i i still like i like loco roco cocorecho and i liked i know it wasn't first party at the time but dead nation everything house mark was doing on the ps3 was great and i, I just that's the stuff i like like and as soon as last of us hit and uncharted hit they were like well they, they fell into the Microsoft trap. 
Microsoft saw Halo Gears Forza all hit. No, like that's it, all in. Halo Gears Forza. That's and then it. That's they doing swapped to connect when that hit, and then yeah. they that's just, all in. Just fell connect. down again. All in. Like they gotta stop doing that. I understand that it works, but like I don't know. And, and we've been we've been seeing it for years now, and like we've said it. Microsoft really want to have a uh, you know a game of the year. Everyone's talking about how it made them feel contender for for whatever year is coming up that we're talking about, right? But I think the opposite is now clearly evident and true. Sony want a grounded, you know, that was made by they, 20 they would people. They thieves, right? You know, they yeah. want these games that seemingly just float under the current of what everyone's talking about, but have millions of players and tons of microtransactions because that's what funds the next experiment um and i guess it's it's kind of like it's a bit of a, a an eye-opening moment for for lots of people that perhaps aren't having much common sense but for me i'm like this is this is a good news thing that that the studios internally are thinking about this the industry is thinking about this i saw a great interview um Stephen, i think it's totillo he, he's gone off and done his own thing now right uh yep. gaming gaming file Game That's file. Yeah, game file. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, right. yes. So Congrats newsletter. to him. He had Great. an interview with uh, a CEO of uh, one of the Nexon outfits. I can't recall, so I haven't got it in front of me. But this guy was like, "Here's how modern game development works," and it's you know, and it's and and it was like, "Yeah, I'm glad this conversation is happening now." So, and we, we've know, also like had a pretty good idea about it since that letter from Phil Spencer explaining the challenges of these these big publishers that were now have to compete with all of these yeah, independent yeah. games getting made and they're on the same mm. marketplaces and their games sell like yeah they they had the advantage of being in retail for a very long time that's out especially on PC and increasingly more on console where games mm. are all just digital and people are making decisions and they're looking at you know at one game they're looking at a, a lethal company here and they're looking at avatar there and it's all basically the same thing to consumers and it's like okay well what have these publishers done to in increase their sort of um, the, the the vibe around themselves, the story that they tell? Like this is a Ubisoft game. This is a the, the, you know Capcom's actually done a pretty good job, but this is an EA yes. game. Oh, are you excited for the next EA game? No, no one cares. And that's yeah. like a huge failing of these massive companies. And now they are in a situation where it's like, well, how do you then get the attention of the gamer? You have to spend a ton of money either on a license and then a ton of money making a great game or a ton of money making a new license or making a new IP and turning it into something special. And that is, there's no guarantee. It's so expensive. Yeah. And, you know, PlayStation's definitely in this situation in a lot of ways. And a big yeah. part of it is like their, their audience responded to the thing of we're going to have the most expensive looking video games. And now they're having a trouble like backing away from that. that. <laughs> yes. They, exactly. they can't. I said this yesterday. I go, I feel for them now because they've backed themselves into a corner where they just can't abandon what they're known for. You know, they have to keep doing this, yes. They have yeah. to. They have no choice. They have to keep doing it. And that's why John will remember I said how many months ago, I feel for Jim Ryan. He's in a tough spot. Yeah. You can see, you can visibly see Jim Ryan's looking at Microsoft and their strategy going, oh, I, I really kind of want to pull in that direction just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, they both, I think they both like, would kill to have what, like, Microsoft would obviously kill to have Game of the Year contenders, and I think Sony yes, would kill obviously. to have all the all the stuff that's happening with Game Pass. And the I'm web talking and strategy, business yeah. wise. Yes. You can see Jim is looking over at Microsoft, going, "Oh God, I, I really wish we pushed a little bit more in that direction." But then he's also fighting probably what Japan wants, and then he's fighting what his customer base demands and expects of him, and he's got all these balls in the air. I, 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 he got one well, in a hard place. Yep, yeah, he got yeah. out while the game was good. Uh, hey, 50 million PlayStation yep. 5 sold. Um, a lot of games have sold very well. Reloading on all of that is going to be a real challenge, and no one knows what the answer is. That's like for all these companies. So it's like, what's next? Where does mm. the growth come from? Every you ask one of these companies, they're like, well, well maybe live service. <laughs> so that doesn't seem like that's yeah. going to work anymore, honey. <laughs> what, what, are you, what are you really? I mean, no, come out for real. What are you? What are you going to do next? And they they don't have an answer because there is no obvious answer other than. Spider-Man 3 is going to be 400 fucking million dollars. Like that, what, yep. what are we doing here? And X-Men, yeah. what's X-Men going to be? Well, yep. And yeah. th one of the main things I saw in the breakdowns was their MAUs have dropped in the last three years. They've gone from like 115 or 120 down to 107. Mm. They're actually, there's less people playing on a PlayStation than there are in the Xbox ecosystem because the Xbox ecosystem is, you know, PC, Windows Minecraft. Store, console. But, but in yeah, the... But like they're what they're not they're selling a ton of consoles to keep what they have 
and they're not growing the way everyone else is really focused on and trying to do. Well, Jez, Jez alluded to this yesterday. He said a lot of, he, he suspects that a lot of, and, and I don't want to misquote Jez, I hope. Paraphrase. He suspects that a lot of those PS5 owners are converted PS4 owners as opposed to brand new PS5 owners. So those, <laughs> so those same people aren't doing anything new. They're not new PS Plus subs. They're not. They they're not adding. They're yeah, that's just... why you got to increase the price of things so you can get more from the same people. I always yes. I had a feeling and... um, the way Sony has Apple's prestige, but Android's customer base, and Microsoft has Android's prestige, but Apple's customer base. Like they have less, but those people are there and they spend more. Um, and then Sony has a much bigger base, like Android does, but they don't spend nearly as much. So they just need to keep trying to make it bigger, but it's. It's mostly just recycling the same people. And I think Microsoft, Microsoft's whole strategy of Game Pass and, and, you know, they bit the bullet in when they were down, right? Okay, yeah, we're, mm. we're just going to do this now while, while we're all down and out. We're releasing everything day and day on PC because, you know, that's the sensible thing to do. Um, I fully expect Sony to, to bite that bullet in the next two years. Eventually. They like, can't within the next yet. two years. As we've said, they can't do it until their first-party cadence can justify it because he, here's where Microsoft being the loser in third place is an advantage. So, and, and being a trillion dollar company helps. <laughs> My, Microsoft could afford to fill in the first party gaps in Game Pass with third party Game Pass deals because you, the, the third parties aren't losing as much as they would if they were doing a third party deal launch on PS Plus because PlayStation's install base is so much bigger. So Sony can't afford to fill those gaps with a lot of third-party launches. So they've just got to bide their time and wait till first party can start pumping stuff out before they go day and day. Yeah. That's, and they need that's to have their the launch situation already. they're in. And and and, and this their is PC the other, launcher, yes. This is the other interesting part, right? Is is, you know, yes, uh, you know, we've seen we've had this peak behind the curtain, but then if we look towards 2024, you know, you can go look up a roadmap, and I would say to a degree, Xbox fans are used to this, right? <laughs> Don't worry, we got you next year. Like 2023, I think, was the first answer. No, 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 we've got this now. I mean, they've had a really mm. good year. One miss, you know, critically with Redfall. I know it's in a lot better state now, um, but they landed well with Starfield. They landed fantastically with Hi-Fi Rush. They and did if well you're going to count expansions and DLC, they've published like, 10 or 11 things this year and had constant live service updates exactly so they're, they're, they're like and their roadmap now as we look forward is is very exciting uh we Do you know, know something else Go from on. from what i'm hearing their roadmap is also far longer than it once was so normally your your standard roadmap is like your five to ten years i think microsoft's out to like 10 to 15 now that's insane yeah because because of how much they've got their roadmap now goes like 15 years ahead. Because that's yeah. when and... Perfect Dark finally comes out, is in 15 years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, Perfect Dark is 2035. <laughs> um, but what, yeah, what, yeah. what about what, what are, you know, like 2023, I think, if you even if you look at it, I remember in 2022 reading the constant headlines, you know, hashtag Xbox tax of, uh, you know, oh, Xbox's launch lineup, and they were dragged for it, rightly so. Now, Sony have come through 2023, they, you know, they paid for the exclusivity of Final Fantasy 16. They released Spider-Man 2. But as we're now heading into 2024, what, what is, what are, what's on the roadmap, guys? Yeah, uh, if mean, you're a PlayStation fan, what are you releasing? MLB what, the show. Big... MLB. Not, That'll be know, the it, age. It yeah. like, for a second there, it was like, hey, that's Spider-Man online mode. Well, nope. Turns out that's been canceled. So yeah. mm. So yeah. I... It's gonna be it's gonna be a weird year because I think this is you know Microsoft I'm, I'm so, have got know, ducks in the row now like it's that coming is, and I, and I I want to be careful how I word this because there was nothing good about this hack and leak and whatever but a part of me is glad some of this info got out because oh yeah and this and this is relevant with Jeff here Jeff will tell you and I'll tell you so much stuff behind the scenes gets cancelled changed this that Constantly, the other yes. 
and it's just funny, you know, the, the, the number one thing that gets thrown at me is, oh, you make stuff up and you just guess and you do this and you do that. Dude, so you have to had... wait two years for Teenage Mutant For the Turtles, Turtles, for the Turtles on Fortnite, I know. <laughs> so, you know, we had that rumor mill a while back about a Marvel multiplayer game that was exclusive to PlayStation 5. And my source at the time speculated with me that they believed Insomniac was working on it. And that was like a long time ago now. That was like a mm-hmm. year and a half ago or something. Yeah. Now, had this leak never happened, this game never would have come to light and everyone would be doing the, you made it up, you lied about that thing. You... But here we hear now that Insomniac was working on a Spider-Man multiplayer game that has since been cancelled. Lucky guess. <laughs> and this is why I keep saying to people, I, ask Jeff, you know how many of my DMs I've shown to Jeff? Like, I'm open about how I get my stuff. And stuff gets cancelled and stuff changes. Yep. It's, and now you're seeing it with this leak. You are seeing how frequently it happens. And, and it's like, scale. it could look really solid. Like, it could look like, hey, this is like, well, it's in a PowerPoint presentation. And they have a, a plan. It's gonna. It's a multi-year plan with multiple different modes and multiple games. And it's like, ah, nope, even that gets cancelled. Like, they, yep. they look for a place to cut back. And it's like, it's easier to cut back on this whole giant thing than to snip away a little bit from everything a lot of times. Yeah. That's how they save money. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I mean, I, I was I was mind blown. Like, I I tried out um, uh, Affinity, certain Affinity's new game they were pitching to publishers at Gamescom, right? And, and I signed an NDA, so I can't describe it outside of it was a first person shooter, and it was freaking cool. It was built in Unreal Five, and it was built in seven months, right? But if if you were a layman and you were going in there and you were just shown it, you'd think it was just, was this finished product, right? It wasn't. It was a very we we crunched this for seven months and here it is, you know, like boom, it looks incredible. But it was a pitch. It's a pitch to to sell the broader idea, right? And I think when when you get this kind of stuff out here, that's the concern certainly from Insomniac's as a developer's perspective is there's lots of stuff that is just not meant to be seen like this. And the problem with normies everyday people seeing behind the curtain is oh you know and they're going to start judging it on what it looks like now yes. have you ever seen a game in an alpha state <laughs> they often mm. look like shit oh, yeah, look, <laughs> you know it all comes together in the last like six months you know yeah, I, I played uh one of my favorite games of the year i played it at summer game fest and i it's like it was um for judges week stuff and I signed an NDA for that, so I can—I don't think I'll ever be able to say what it was. Not that it matters, but it's like I'll never be able to say what it was. But I played it there, and it's like, man, this thing's mostly broken. Uh, it's just mostly broken, and I understand that it's not going to be a problem for me to go out there and be like, oh, I have lower expectations for this game now because the the build I played was broken because they needed something for Judges Week. Uh, but yeah, that happens all the time. And then you know, a couple months later, that game is out and great. So yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's wild. We've got a we've got a couple of super chats probably that will touch on some of the some of the insomnia yes, at least yes, just yes. to close off the section. So and uh, before you okay. do that though, yep, yep. everybody, kindly, please, all of you, you lovely people in the season of good spirit and goodwill, hit that like button. Appreciate it. After you, Nick. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right. Muhammad Sherez, the fantastic Muhammad Sherez. A lot of this energy should be redirected to Sony slash Insomniac's lack of cybersecurity controls instead of console warring on Twitter priorities. I wonder how, like, someone, I can't remember if it was Cog or Jez or someone in chat, I can't even remember, mentioned that they had heard that this happened, someone was fished at Insomniac or somehow no, someone... I, I surmised, like, typically, I do a lot of cybersecurity training for work, uh, my, my day job, um, and phishing is the predominant way in so this is social engineering hey, this is your ceo and i just need you to go ahead and uh, yeah, it, use your it, card to buy these things for me real quick it's like oh like, it I, is? i've had it no, it's not my, my my work teams will ping and be like hey and it will look like someone and i'm i work for a global company so they could be in you know apac they could be in 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 us and they could be like hey could you and you're like are you real and you have to you have to really think about this. And it just takes one human being who hasn't had a coffee or is stressed out or had something going on at home to just misclick or misthink mm-hmm. and boom, they are in the yep. system. A lot of so it as um, hack if they is, get your a, if they term. get your login and they, they know it's gonna ping your two factor, they'll try and figure out where, where that where are you? If it's nighttime and it's the middle of the night and your phone's on your bedside table and there's a notification. Sometimes you just go to pick it up, hit the notification, don't even realize it, and approve their login. And that is like one mm. of the main ways that people I know have been 
you know, they call it hacking. They're also but, very you know. clever about it these days. Like there's situations yeah. where they'll be on the phone with an agent who's talking to you, acting like they're you. The agent will say, I've sent you a code. What's the code? They're with you acting like the agent, getting that code off you that they then pass on. Yeah. Which is, oh man, like it, it happens it's, all sorts of ways. Evil. It's evil, evil stuff. And you know, if you're the so. human being that made that error and let these guys in and you feel horrible, this, you feel man, horrible. You would, yep. you would, you would feel absolutely distraught with yourself. Like how many people? Anxiety doesn't even begin to describe it. Yeah. So heart goes out to them if that's how how this mm. hack. Yeah. We don't, again, we don't know, but yeah. yeah. Uh <clears throat> how do I pronounce it? It's not because it's not George, is it? It's isn't it Jorge. Okay, you can Acosta. go with that. I don't know. You can go with it. Either George or whatever. Yeah, anyway. I apologize if I've said it wrong. I think Totoki will make PlayStation follow. Is that the new... Uh, the interim CEO, isn't it? Yeah, uh, okay. and he's got like five jobs. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we'll make PlayStation follow Microsoft's steps in the coming years. Dude is focused on profit. And from the leaks, we know why uh, the margins are so small. Well, yeah, their profit fell by like 50% or something in the last 12 months. Their profit fell. Yeah. Um, because as Jeff was saying before, man, this shit costs so much money to make. And that's that we just saw the dev budgets. That didn't even, I don't even think that included the marketing budget. That was right. just the dev yeah. budgets. Yeah, it, so, it probably doesn't. Uh, but, and if it doesn't, that's <laughs> that. Yeah, you, you kind of start putting two and two together why Sony's been so aggressive on nickel and diming everybody for the last year or so. Yeah, like it's, it's worrying it's, to be honest. Can you imagine a, a marketplace without PlayStation in it? Yeah, I mean, I don't think we, I don't think we'd ever get to that point. No, no, as, no as, I, as I, I don't want to be as, as healthy and robust as possible because when yeah. when they're keeping everyone else on their toes, I think we get the best from gaming. Um, yes, you don't want them sort oh. of being like being hesitant. I don't want to. I don't want to hesitate, Sony. Although they do seem a little bit like you know they got a little bit of that freeze right now. We're like unsure about what to do next. Yeah, yeah, and 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 that's because as we alluded to earlier, they're caught in a weird spot right now because yep. they're not like uh, and Microsoft being at the, especially at the time so irrelevant. It was very very easy for Microsoft to just pivot on a dime. Yep. And just be like, okay, well, this is what we're doing next. We're going to do Game Pass. We're going to do PC Game and Day. Yeah, a few people had a bit of a whinge and a cry about it. They got over it, realized how good it was, and away they went. Sony can't pivot that suddenly. They can't. They just. Well, they tried their pivoting to live it. service and it has not worked. Like they tried to pivot well, quickly well, there. I don't think they tried to pivot quickly. That's been something mm. that's been in the works for well, longer quick, than yeah, most quick, people quick realize. Quick for them, I mean. But yeah. Yeah, that's something that's been in the works for a while. But I think what we're seeing is because a lot of it appears to have not worked, that's what might be making it look hasty on the surface. Just the fact that it hasn't, a lot of it hasn't really worked at the moment. Um, but there's still a lot to come. There's still, there's still games that have been announced, like the one from um, Haven. Haven? Is it Haven? Uh, yeah, um, is that yeah. fair games? Is that that one? Yeah, yep. we we don't know how they're going to land. There's obviously there'd be stuff that's not announced. Um, and hey, if if the Bungie <clears> stuff <throat> keeps progressing the way it's progressing, Marathon could very well end up being a, a PlayStation exclusive by the time that uh, comes out. That's the problem, though. You make a you make a live service game one platform. Or say goodbye to like sixty percent of your money. I was just about well, to say, we'll see if Thieves is one platform, but it's not. It's PC. It's and not, right? And that's where Microsoft have had this Xbox. constant advantage since 2017, 2016, where they were like, mm. fuck it. Suck it up, Xbox diehards. We're going to do this, and mm. you're just going to have to come along for the ride. Um, yeah, uh, yeah it, they're, it, they're in a spot. They're in a jam. Um, they are. It's rough. I, I feel for them from that perspective, because you can tell they want to change. You can tell they want to, but it's just not that simple for them. Yeah, I, I don't um, think they can like easily start doing the experimental experimental stuff and have that be the the business success for them. I would like them to do more of that, but you know they you know they helped with Death Stranding, and that was one of their mm -hmm. you know, four four million Quirks, copies yeah. ac according to this this chart here. It's like you know Drive mm. Club sold better, Infamous Second Second Son sold better on the Days PlayStation. Gone, 
Yep. Yeah. Yeah, Days Gone sold way better than that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like Days Gone, a game that's probably less liked than Death Stranding, um, did significantly better because why? Because it looked expensive. Yeah. Mm. That's yeah, that's the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy. Um well, super chat. Good old Collingwood. Tell me why I should be concerned for PlayStation. I play Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. You know. We've seen how all of them are when they're in a dominant position, and it's never good. Yep, I don't know if watching. I agree with that. I don't mm. know if I agree with that. I I don't think. But then again, we didn't really see Xbox in a truly dominant position. No, they never. The no, that closest was, that was we the saw, most competitive generation. Yeah, the closest we saw Microsoft dominate was them being the dominant US console. Yeah. With the 360, like that, then outsold the Wii in the US. Yep. Like yeah. the 360 was dominant in but the But then US. look at the hubris they walked into the Xbox One generation with. Yep. <laughs> that, uh, that's, that's the, the message, example, messaging right hubris, but really. Because the, the actual say, setup for their was... games was still really good. They had a lot of yes. good games. They just had really shit messaging. I don't know if that was so much hubris as it was a misreading of of the market and a misreading of their data and what their data was telling them. Yeah, Remember, I, Mike, I, I... Right. I think they definitely misread the telemetry for sure, but they re- misread it in a way that was powered by hubris, I think. Yeah. At least like, in that moment. In that yeah. moment, they were, they were confident that their, that their butt didn't stink uh, and that they could force gamers to do the things the Xbox way instead of sort of um, intercepting gamers where they're going to be. That's what they're doing right now. Like right now, yeah. they're like, we're going to build the thing that, you're, that you are going to like, that's going to be more convenient for you. And we're going to meet you where you're at. And then we're sort of going to like nudge you in the direction you, we want you to go back then. It's like, no, we're doing this. And you're going to come to us because we're Xbox. And you that need a connect. God damn it. Yeah. Yeah. It was, yeah, it yeah, was yeah. the, it was the, uh, yeah, oh, yeah. Well, you know, that's, that's that a better generation, way of saying it. That generation had Netflix as an app and it was, it was just at that. And then, Oh, people are just watching TV on their consoles. So that's the way we're going to go. That's yep. right. Oh, cool. Yep. <laughs> that's an additive well, well, feature. It was, it, it was it was a, a the right call in that that's what was happening. Their data was telling them yeah. that all these three sixties are just watching Netflix. That's all right, they're, they're doing. They're watching way more TV, so that's what we need to be worried about. But it's like that's right. But it was but it, it was incorrect in sort in sort of uh, selling context. people a gaming machine. Yes. It was yeah. ignoring context. Yeah. It was ignoring the fact that it was the end of the generation. People were waiting for uh, the new console and the penetration of the of the hardcore had come and gone and you were looking at all the casuals that were just watching Netflix on your box. So you were it's ignoring It's also very all... easy to make a box that watches TV and people don't feel the need yes. to spend $500 on one. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Especially with a forced accessory they didn't want at the time. Yep. Again, doesn't change the fact that I will die on the hill that they were fucking at very much ahead of their time. Oh yeah, yeah. And, I mean, Typical they, Microsoft. They, they could. Oh, I think they yeah. could have navigated it. They could have like positioned the Kinect yeah. as a smart speaker instead of what they positioned it yep. as. And a lot of that stuff could have worked, but it didn't. Yeah. And Look at one guy. They didn't really understand what they had. One guide is copied by Apple and Google now. That's what Google yep. TV. Google TV is literally what one guide was on Xbox One. Um, yeah. Well, you know, it's more like Wii TV. Remember that on the Wii U? That's <laughs> <laughs> Wii TV. <laughs> Wii TV. <laughs> Nintendo, you quirky <laughs> bastards. <laughs> oh dear. Um, all right. Anyway. All right. Uh, I mean, tentatively, Jeff. While we got you, uh, and I'm conscious of time, so I don't really want to keep you longer than two hours. If if we can avoid it, and let you go take some, you know, lem sip and feel better about Appreciate life that. before Christmas Day rocks in. A uh, lot of talk out there. I think, you, you know, you, you quite rightly announced the Switch 2 is going to be revealed uh, Christmas Eve, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Um, where did that come <laughs> from? Wait, is that because of that flash cart thing? Yeah, yeah. It was uh, yeah, like, he made a the joke. flash cart. It was just like, well, Nintendo's going to rush things now. I mean, it's just a joke. Uh, but Yeah, that's yeah. what I thought was. Well, of course it is. Like, they're not going to make their employees work on the Saturday before Christmas. So, like, that was like, so I'm like, this is the most obvious joke that's ever been ha- that's ever been on Twitter. Uh, but of course, a bunch of nim yeah. poops don't get it. Um, yeah, it's it, like the, 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 it, we're going through the end of this year. It's like, oh man, what's going to happen next year? It's really hard yeah. to put a finger on the pulse of like exactly how things are gonna, things are going to go down. But this time next year, we have the Switch follow up. Surely we, we should have PS5 Pro. Yeah, uh, I think we probably have the PS5 Pro. Yeah. Um, there was I oddly pro- nothing about that in the Insomniac leak, like nothing yeah. about, there was something about a launch game in 2027, but nothing kind of hinting at a PS5 Pro. I was surprised. Yeah, I, I, this, um, 
I think a lot of this data that we do have is is real, it's like a couple years old, right? Uh, so it's like that stuff probably would not have been solidified at that point. Yeah. Do you think Microsoft are going to uh, follow suit with a pro console? Like, do you think that this 2SQ approach, SKU approach for this gen has now put them in a bind where then you've got three if you introduce a pro console? Like, where do you think they're going to land? I think that they um, have a pretty interesting argument of we already have an Xbox Pro. It's called the P the personal computer. Go, go mm -hmm. get a personal computer if you want to play all of our games in the highest possible definition, way better than even a PS5 Pro. Um, and then that can, like, maybe help them for a little bit until I, – I think, hey, if they do launch a successor in 2026, um, I, I think that makes a lot of sense. For, for one, I don't think they are benefited by going head-to-head -head with PlayStation and launching a console at the same exact time. So if they can get away from that and begin, like, a different cadence, I think that's going to benefit, benefit them in the long run. Um, and I, I think uh, that's a six-year console cycle. And I think some people are still kind of like, no, I, I want that. For me, that feels really fast these days. But uh, yeah. you know, I look around, many, uh, many people don't agree with that. Many people are like, no, six years, I'm ready to move on. It's like, well, you know, it, it hasn't really been six years for a very long time, these console generations, like literally decades. Mm. Uh, yeah. that was, and so, but people grew up with that, and so they kind of want that. And like Microsoft could maybe navigate that and make that make sense. And Obviously, the hardware will then be uh, in a weird comparison sp spot when the PS5 or PS6 comes out. But then you have a, a new Xbox a couple years later that's even more powerful than that. And, and who knows how long the PS6 generation is going to go. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. I think that could work. I think it's difficult because asking people for a lot of money up front for hardware more frequently is difficult. Like, uh, And, and I, maybe Microsoft will try to buy their time until they can go all cloud. I don't know how serious they are thinking about if that's going to actually be an option. Yeah. um so it's a golden I, yeah. toilet all right <laughs> I, yeah i think the most likely thing is that that uh, something new in 2026 i think that is a real deal possibility do you do you think mm. that they'll do the like when we talk about something new if they were to launch a new generation like we've we've long said on this show like i think all three of us would really love you know the series s to become some form of a portable, a portable. Due, due to the appetite that you see yeah that'd be great and be that be that a switch targeted portable which is more focused on a budget of, you know, 400 bucks. Or do you go the very popular now Steam Deck, Rogue Ally, Legion Go route of like your 700 really high end portable and capture that market? Like, what do you think is more viable from a two? Yeah, I mean, for, for them, it's more viable to do the $700 one because it's going to be very difficult to get. If, if, if we're talking about turning a Series S into a, yes, a handheld, exactly. if, that's, if that is the answer, uh, it's got to be more expensive, actually, because uh, it's going to be very difficult to get that system down into Powerful. a portable. And yeah, and, and, yeah um, especially with the, the architecture that they're using. Uh, so, yeah, you know, it's if they can take that, do a, uh, let's, what are we on right now with AMD, four nanometer? They could probably yeah, get pretty exactly. close to making that make sense, but that would be $700 easily. Um, yeah. Mm. Uh, now, you know, they wait one more generation, maybe they can get three nanometer AMD processors. Uh, that'd be very power efficient. They'd be able to get a lot of chips per wafer. Um, maybe they can lower the price a little bit, but I, I think people are accepting like, oh yeah, if, if I'm going to get a handheld, basically something that's as powerful as an uh, Xbox Series S and can run all these games the way an S should, uh, yeah. I think people would be willing to, you know, 650, like Ooh, in yeah. that range. I think that's a number that people that. are very comfortable with now. And the, um, the power nice. draw, if they, the theoretical going to ARM, would be enormous for a portable if they're yes if they now an right processor. if if they then that's something they've said they've considered and that was in part of the ftc leaks it's like they're at least mm. considering arm um i i know when i talked about that on twitter people like no that's not gonna happen some playstation weirdos are like they'll never do that i'm like why why not like apple their did actual it. their no system problem. their hypervisor the way they do things works a lot more easily than it does yes. for pretty much anyone else. Yeah, and that's and that's how Xbox the the OS already works that way. So it's like they're mm. they have are they're already well into the like the groove of being able to make that switch. And if they switch to ARM, um, that would be massively more power efficient. And then they could get it mm. down to four hundred, five hundred dollars. Yeah, I think that's one of the things that really it confuses me on like PS5 Pro. It's gonna have to be pretty similar in CPU which is going to be one of the major bottlenecks. So I don't know how much actual performance you end up gaining from it, unless it's 
because they're the way they do it more to the metal their whole thing they have to keep it similar for their back combat so they have to go up in a set number of cores they have to go yep. up keep the the very high clocks and use their you know super high um temps and everything so it is i think it's a lot worse for them to do a pro than it is for microsoft be just because of that they get way more waiting for an actual generational refresh because amd's tech is getting a hell of a lot better yes very fast interesting times it's, it's going to be an interesting next couple of years that's for sure mm. uh we've got one more super chat uh, and then we'll dive yeah, into some other more, quick fire more news Venthus. haven't heard from more Venthus in a long time he's back um i think the pissed. next big MS move is to get more games on the Xbox Play Anywhere platform to work on these handheld devices and consoles and PC. Yeah, Play Anywhere just it didn't disappear, but man, it dropped off. Sega it. is it's all hard. in on it. Like Sega's big. Everything they do is Play Anywhere, pretty much. I mean, it's great, yep. but it's hard to tell a publisher, "Hey, do you mind giving away a copy for free for this other platform if they buy it here?" You know, yep. that's a hard yeah. ask. It is a it, part it, of it most. Is. It's. Can do it. Pretty default for Game Pass now. Like Capcom does it yeah. whenever they're on Game Pass and that type of stuff. And so it's still, probably part of the deal that they signed. Yeah, up, that's but. probably still gonna be most of the time you see bigger third parties put uh play anywhere on them. I think yeah. uh you the think next thing I want to see from Xbox and Microsoft is Windows, but it actually is good to use on one of these handheld yeah. platforms. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah they, they need to work on the if their... they could do that, that's a that's a huge for me. Like uh right now I'm Don't they have that new mode? They have, well, I mean, they have some new modes that make it a little bit better, but you're but still, you still need to run like the um, Asus or, or the uh, um, what the Lenovo software on top, and that stuff is garbage. Mm. And you know, it, it gets updated, but you know, who knows how much those software teams are actually putting work mm. into making that stuff um, uh, work right. So, and Windows is very unpredictable when it's uh, meshing up with these other outside on over the top layers yeah. of software. And it would be real nice if they just got to a point where it's like, no, we're going to build uh, one that it knows that you're using it on a handheld gaming computer uh, and behaves yes. the way it should. Uh, that would be, and I think, you know, they've talked about that a little bit. They've yeah, they talked like, about the Windows yeah. Store getting everyone on there. They don't have to give a cut because that could let them actually, okay, you just load up Windows Store on your mobile and it's designed to give you all of your launchers right here and it, it's good to go. It's about the only way I could think they're going to end up doing it because there's too our, many launchers. Our friend... Our friend ZDocs just reminded me, yes, compact mode is only for the Xbox app. That's right. I got confused. Okay, I thought it was Windows, yeah, but it's just for One the of Xbox the best things app. to use on the go is to just use like big picture mode with Steam because it is yes. designed that way. And it's one of the yeah. only ones that actually works with a controller and everything. Along yeah, with I mean, it's, it's, and then, you know, the Steam Deck OS is come a long way very fast. And it's like, okay, this is what a, a portable gaming PC OS can be. Windows needs to get there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, uh, and I think you're only going to really see that investment from Microsoft if they're building one themselves. Maybe, right? yeah, you might be right. Uh, that kind of feels like where I it's, think it's, it's possible if, to be. If a, one of these third-party companies decides to, like, launch theirs with, like, SteamOS built in as the default instead of Windows, that might shake Microsoft a little bit, but probably not. <laughs> you're probably right. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, they've paid yeah. Asus and Lenovo a lot, or they've, they've partnered yes. with them heavily. Um, you get three yeah. months of Game Pass with both of them, I think. I'm up to like a year of Game Pass from all the Lenovo stuff I've reviewed because you get three mm. months every friggin' time. Yeah. Um, so they seem full in on that. I am hoping that maybe they work with Lenovo software people because half the time the Legion Go software goes to, um, I think it goes to Chinese and I have to very carefully guess where I can change it back to English. Fun. Yeah. I, st I still think I still think they're gonna do a portable Series S. I still yeah, think they, they're I gonna mean, do I, it. I hope so. I really hope so. I hope so. That'd oh nice. god, I'd love it so much. I play that a lot with an OLED screen, please. Oh, just Rocket right. League and Fortnite wherever I go, like just properly. Like by oh, the way, you'll be you'll be you'll be proud of my my son, right? He's been Minecraft, mm -hmm. Minecraft, Minecraft, and uh, my missus's boy said, "Can I come play Fortnite with me?" He's a year older, right? And then mm. now, like for the last two days, uh, like just screaming, yeah! Lego Fortnite. like no, no, he started <laughs> in Lego Fortnite because that was the gateway drug for the Minecraft yeah. kids, right? And now he's just mm. playing Fortnite and he's coming. Oh, wow. Battle Royale. Yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking at all the Fortnite fucking Christmas presents I bought this kid, right? Uh, mm. Minecraft Christmas presents. And he's like, he said to me today, 
I need 2,800 V-Bucks. V-Bucks. Oh, oh, yeah, fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My son, my son <laughs> came in, I think, yesterday morning. He goes, he's still got his, like, PlayStation headphones on because he didn't want to wake us up early in the morning. And he comes in, he goes, Baba, Baba. I just got two victory royales in a row. <laughs> two in a row. Now, I, I, there's the celebratory balloons. And I didn't I didn't want to spoil him and say, buddy, it was probably bots. But I, oh, I yeah. let it go. Let the magic be I real. Let it go. Yeah. <laughs> I let it go. All right. He so quick, so quick fire news topics because uh, we obviously want Jeff here for uh, uh, name a game. Name a game. Right. So... Uh, First of all, uh, a moment of uh, gravitas, please. Uh, Max Payne's voice actor, James McCaffrey, uh, passed away from cancer earlier yeah. this week. Um, very, very sad. He, I think he voiced it in Max Payne 3 as well, which I played today, right? So, um, and he was Alex Casey in, in the recent Alloway 2 as well. Yep. Um, and so he was director news. Trench in control. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so rest in peace. Uh, James mm. McCaffrey, sad news for, for all of the uh, Remedy team as well, and obviously his family. Um, bit of a bummer. Uh, yeah. Toys for Bob were caught experimenting in Unreal Engine 5, which obviously set tongues a-wagging because everyone just mm. immediately assumes that they're going to obviously make a Banjo-Kazooie game of some sort. Might, uh, may have got a sneaky DM about what they may have been working on. So I need, do we need to hit the rumor mill button? Or no, you... I'm not no, saying anything no. until I can confirm more. Maybe I'll run it by Jeff later and see what he said. <laughs> but Fair enough. I, I may have got a sneaky DM about what Toys of Bob were blurring on that screen there. Mm-hmm. And if it's true, quite excited. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. okay. Quite excited. Um, Activision Blizzard King uh, settled their We're Creepy Sex Predators lawsuit uh, for $55 million with California. Um, does that mean that they're no longer sexy, creepy predator people now? Or is, it, is that how it works? Here's I mean, some money. They, we're no longer they bad. are, but they're on the right side of the law now. Oh, yeah. convenient. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, so I guess that's done and dusted. But hey, also, Bobby Kotick is out. Uh, as of yeah. my dad's birthday. Quickly, funny. too. Yeah, Weekly. he's gone. Well, like, it was as expected. They were never going to say that really up front, but yeah, of course he's out. Like, he knows he's not liked internally. No, the, sh- the shock's not that he's out. I think most thought he'd be out sometime next year. Yep. I don't. But, I mean, they be- as soon as it went through, they were just like, and Bobby Kotick is going to provide his services continued until the end of this year. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. uh, it's like homie, that's in like a couple of weeks. <laughs> it was like, Bye. Get out of here. It's quite a few um, people golden over parachute. on the list, too. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, I, I, I saw going. Yeah, lots of people pouring one out for for Lulu, like, oh, your tenacity she's, in, in it's helping because she's become a little bit of a social media sensation. It, yeah, she was console warring her. Oh, and she was also cosplaying. Off. Yeah. Uh, oh, right. That's the okay. She, I saw her picture with Barry Weiss, which is like an American political commentator. That sucks. <laughs> I'm yes. like, okay, yeah. bye, Lulu. Uh, okay, we'll miss your yeah. um, union busting, Lulu. Yes, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, basically, Microsoft are doing the big old reorg um, as they as they hit 2024 with all of these teams. Matt Booty effectively is now is is a very busy man, um, overseeing mm. lots and lots. It, of it seems like they're also games. they're going to be then they will be independent of each other under him. So it's Activision yes. and Blizzard and King. Blizzard not together separate. anymore. Yeah, yeah. back to the way it was, which That's I bet they're happy about. Extremely. Mm. Right, because now it's like, you know, the the problem for Blizzard for years was Activision is not just rubbing off on us; like they're actively in, like invading into our spaces. Yes. And it's like, well, now that's no longer a problem. Maybe it'll ha- come from Microsoft, but there's optimism that yeah, it maybe it won't be perfect, but it will be better than when it was Activision. Yeah, yeah. And I I think yeah, that yeah. sounds right to me. Yeah, mm. yeah, I, I'm looking forward to seeing what all of the uh, teams are going to be able to do. Did now. you guys watch the um the Psychonauts thing like when matt booty like, came in i'm like halfway through it yeah, yeah if you get to the point where matt booty comes in and, and you can see they're kind of apprehensive like we need more time and money he's like okay just let me know what yep how long <laughs> yeah. and how much that's fine yeah i yeah. I, I would talk to some people that are at xbox they're like yeah that's pretty much how it goes where it's like <laughs> if you if you need money he's got you if you like you need like uh like the, the, the hands-on like guidance he's like well you can get it it's just a little bit harder to come by from like his team of matt booty and his team so it's like money's not a problem though yeah, that's, that's good. good I mean, 
that's good, oh yeah though. no for especially for many of these i mean for blizzard that's gonna be great for uh double fine that was great you know for some of the for some of the studios it has not been great but yeah like uh, hands-on and guidance the the arcane team for for redfall before launch probably they, they just didn't know they could ask for more time and money that's what it seems like right yeah, yeah. they had no clue which but is I think crazy to me that that kind of breakdown of comms could still happen but i you know i guess it well, can they were they uh, were operating so long under providence equity who was like okay you gotta get the shit out fast you gotta focus on things you're not used to with live service and then you're shifting and it, and it takes a long time and there's so many people you just you don't know i you could have just come to us and said you need more time because you did it once you could have done it again it would have been better right and microsoft was starting to say like we should have been the ones bridging that mm -hmm. gap yeah and, and explaining that and it's like yep absolutely yeah yeah um, like, but that's the thing that's the beauty of that investment like it's that money is allowing all these studios to like we saw it how much they were staffing up and i think that staffing up's going up even more i think compulsion i think even compulsion is now on the verge of splitting up into two teams they've been able to staff up and they're I, already I, looking at like expansion dlc for south of midnight which isn't even out yet i still think south of midnight is is going to land this year i think that's going to be one of those smaller next year it would be really surprising to be yes, a 2023 game. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, 2024 I, I yeah, so. yeah god that um, trailer was that trailer was just but this is the, this is what by I the like, end of like we happy few smaller, tighter games. sorry, sorry i was gonna say by the end of we happy few compulsion was great like you can see the the limits early on with the main game when there was like eight people but by the time they had staffed up a little and they had figured it out the the last expansion of we happy few or last dlc was really good Mm. yeah good times um starfield lots of conversations about starfield this year games industry biz reported that xbox and starfield were the most covered game and platform in gaming fascinating Ooh. stuff uh hashtag xbox tax lots of people going you know those those oh starfield sucks now uh articles were were pretty rife um this year and quite clearly paid off um, but Starfield has over 30 million players. Um, 13. I think Bethesda came 30 through. 30 or 13? 13. 1-3, 13. One, three, one, three. Yes. Um, and they came through with like a, a last kind of like, hey, we're going to do city maps and new ways to walk around or, or move around mm -hmm. and traverse and more updates and mods and things like in that. Very in very early next year for mods, like early 2024. Should be good. Lovely. Yeah, so be interesting to see what happens on that front. But um, I, thought, I thought the whole, the games industry biz reporting on that, I mean, it's pretty pretty expected right starfield being the the number one people loved to report on it both well they don't, they don't say positive negative. or negative they just no, they say don't. talked about <laughs> yeah it, it was certain, if it you was. look at the um the list starfield was like 2000 ahead of diablo 4 which was in like 20000 ahead of tears of the kingdom like those those two That's were crazy. neck and neck and xbox was like way ahead of playstation this year when they weren't last year yeah. maybe like I said, mate, any, the old school, any publicity is good publicity. Good publicity. That's just that. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, old school through. mantra just, <laughs> hey, okay, there's no logo on Blade, but look how they it's kept talking about it. better be talked about than not be talked about. Yes, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yep. Well, that's I, right. I think just by the very nature of, um, of, of the frequent Game Pass drops, that every two weeks you get this nudge of, hey, new stuff, new stuff, new stuff. Microsoft naturally are spoken about more across industry because they often have more to say i, I think it's also uh because you, you'll get this with people like why why do you like have so much more to say about xbox it's like xbox is trying different things in a way that playstation mm. is like they're settled into their spot at on the top and they're af they're afraid to change things up rightfully so what, mm. what they've done for a long time had had worked up to a point and it is still working in many ways so it's like hey the thing that they did before is still working is not a great headline uh it, but a good yeah. headline is uh, okay microsoft continues to try to disrupt the industry in this way in this way in this way that stuff is more uh, eye-catching so it's just inherently more interesting to talk about yeah yeah That's and, and they want to know point. like pe like a lot of people in the industry including people like jeff and tom and all them all want to know it's like oh wow how much money did you throw at this third party deal? What yep. how much are you giving in these for Game Pass? How is Game Pass affecting sales of your games? Like people want to know that stuff. Yep. Yeah. Like it's yeah. I, I often feel very sorry for a lot of uh very PlayStation focused podcasts because it, it's just like it's like do something. Do you know what I mean? Like, what is there to talk about week in, week out? We're still number one. Sales. Sales, <laughs> yeah. Well, we sold fifty million consoles. Yeah. Okay. Well. 
Mm-hmm. Speaking of Game Pass, um, the I think one of the directors. Hey, wait, on... real quick. I'm sorry. You know what they talk oh. about on the PlayStation podcast, though. <laughs> they, <laughs> they talk about, about Xbox, Xbox quite a lot. <laughs> 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 That's the joke. <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna get clipped <laughs> uh, it's true they know they know oh, yeah uh, what would they do if xbox didn't exist yeah, um, every week it's like and this is how why game pass is awful so what the how did we get here <laughs> <laughs> well i think you Mario. know what are you talking about after after the big leaks this week with uh, all the hacks, yeah, I was about to say to be fair, Soviet. a lot of Xbox podcasts are talking about PlayStation. This oh yeah, week of course, as well. yes, yeah, yeah. rightfully so, yeah, yes. absolutely. Um, yeah, so uh, director for Lies of P uh, on Game Pass and it being you know not sustainable said it was actually fantastic uh, for launching Game Pass. He said the Xbox team ran a wide wide range of marketing campaigns for Lies of P. Can't reveal the exact number, but a huge number of gamers have played our game through Game Pass. We believe both parties earned a very good result from this collaboration. So always nice to see. And I think it's certainly for new IP, it's a real if you can get a good Game Pass deal, it's a great way to get that new IP. And then when you come to do your sequel, you, you you're a little bit more known, you're a little bit more respected. You you maybe don't need that deal anymore. But for for new IP, I think it's a it's a, a great benefit. Uh, to launch into a service like that so always Definitely. nice to see um what else what else what else uh oh industry sucks news we're not done the year still yeah. continues first contact entertainment shutting down um these are the developers for playstation vr 2's uh firewall ultra i think it was yeah the first firewall was pretty well received on psvr but then two they tried to do a bunch of like stuff with the new tech that kind of made people sick and not enjoy it as much but still yeah, sucks yeah. to see. And it seems uh, Tiny Build uh, shut down uh, another. I think they're another VR team versus Evil. Well, I think they uh, were a publisher. Both. Like they, they yeah, went out. Yeah. Oh, okay. The publishing label, yeah. Mm-hmm. Of VR games, is that right? Some, I think they, they did. Yeah, they did a bunch of stuff. Uh, they yeah. did some games that were pretty good. Why well, can't I remember them off the top of my head right now? Yeah, <laughs> there's too many games. That's why. Yeah, there's, just, there's too yeah, much. There is too many games. Um, and then we had uh, Jackai Studios, who made Stray Souls, also shutting down. And they um, had a lot of problems with, um, I think, it, I forget the story now, but I think they had a lot of problems with someone who hacked their systems and was constantly harassing them about it. And that has been a big part of leading into to this. Mental. There you go. And that's the news. That's all the news. All Which right. means we've got, we've got 25 minutes to, to do a name a game I- and... I, f- I feel like we're going to get complaints that we didn't talk about the insomniac stuff long enough. Really? I, th- I feel like I we said everything. Yeah, we we're so to late say, like, in the is... week too. Like you know, is this there anything else? I talked about it so much yesterday on Xbox too. So I've yeah, just I... been repeating myself. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, do do we have a rumor mill? Because I got like two small tidbits. If you like, Ooh. want me to like just like we we do have a rumor. Okay, mill. all right. So like, we'll make it up to them then. All right. Yeah, like, we yeah. we'll have okay. that. So yeah, yeah. we'll do name a game and then finish up on a rumor mill. Sounds good. So, okay. Yeah. All right. There you go. Jesse, hit that button. Hitting the button. Host a game show. Yeah. Ooh. All right. Let me get you the buzz in live. Jeff, so if, if, it, if you're living buzzing. under a rock, and Jeff, I presume you've you, you've done name a game before, right? I you have. I, by yes, now. but I don't remember the rules. Has so he? Not, not, Has Jeff yeah, done name I'm a game? I'm sure he's done a name I've a game. I've done your guys's game, one of your game shows before. Have you done anything else other than name a game? No, oh. I don't think so. I've done name a game at least once. We're creatively Brought to you by bankrupt. Manscaped. Yeah. <laughs> oh, cool. Let but me the uh, get is... you the list on Discord, Jeff. The, yeah. The, the, the nutshell yeah. is Jesse will give you a, a list of uh, probably ten games where he's swapped the no- the words around for the names of the games into uh, synonyms or or antonyms of those words. So example i always give perfect dark would become immaculate shadow nick and i have to guess there's usually a theme mm. away you go um simple gotcha. as that i have already won for the year sure and john is being rather stubborn about the prize we agreed to <laughs> when we started this which is the winner for the year gets Goes a the margarita game at, oh. at the expense of the loser oh wow 
Nick so doesn't want to take I... into account that I'm currently stuck with a bill of £10,512 for shipping all of the Xbox era books and it's not on him. <laughs> He's wondering what... That's not Nick's problem. <laughs> yeah, it's not Nick's problem. I'm giving him a free name. <laughs> Asshole. Use my control money. Use my control money <laughs> to buy me Sonic Superstars. Oh, God. God. I, got I sent you the code, uh, yesterday. John. <laughs> Thank you, mate. Yeah, and I, the scoreboard was set up for Jeff. It was not set up for John, I admit it. Oh, it's okay. okay. It's okay. I'm here now. I'm here now. I mean, Jeff can got... play instead, and I'll be the host. I don't mind. I've now seen the list. Yeah, oh, it's okay. too late. Too late for yeah, that. Jeff, Jeff, <laughs> no, let Jeff, Jeff play. You can win Jeff I guess I've only looked at the first one, but still. <laughs> Jeff has to be the host. Yep, I'm the host. What's the topic? What's today's yeah, what's topic? The topic? Uh, all right, let's go here. Uh, category, games that had Christmas in the main game or the DLC. So great, Christmas appeared somewhere oh, in the game. Okay, okay. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's just analyzing the list. <laughs> I'm like making sure, like, let's uh, fact check here. Okay. Was, oh, definitely. It was like game sure. where I, I hit a couple of reputed sites who described either the game itself being on Christmas or around Christmas or having Yeah, yeah, you're good Christmas on all these, yeah. yeah. You're good, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Bet your ass. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh, Nick, yeah. who are we playing for this week? Oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> We're so prepared. Playing. We are playing. I am playing for Sally Shida, and John is playing for Devin Herrett. Cool. Thank you very much, patrons. Cool. And and for obviously, if you want to have a chance to have Nick or I act as your champion in Name the Game in 2024, all you need to do is be a Patreon member. And we'll pick you at random at some point, no doubt. Uh, just head to patreon.com forward slash Xbox Era. Um, yeah, it's good like that. We're good like that. We give stuff away. We've also got, mm. just as a, a polite piece of housekeeping, we've been doing the 12 days of Christmas giveaway for the last 12 days. Uh, tomorrow we'll be giving away, uh, today I think we're giving away Armored Core 6, uh, Naruto Boruto, uh, an EA Sports Game of some description. Tomorrow, Baldur's Gate 3 is on the list. There's a couple of other good Ooh. ones. Last chance to win, so keep an eye on Twitter for that. And I will be uh, notifying the winners even on Christmas Day. I'll let you know. So that'll be a nice little extra surprise. Cool. All right, Jeff, over to you as the yeah. as the game show host. All right, uh, welcome to Name a Game for December 23rd, 2023, oh, everybody. God damn it, Nick. So, sorry, Jesse. Sorry, Jesse. He buzzed in. Oh, buzzed. Okay. Nick, uh, he's disqualified. Congratulations to John. You won. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Are, are we ready? Uh, like, uh, Jesse, yes. are you going to handle like when they buzz in and, uh, and yep. stuff? Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Okay. All yeah, right. yeah, yeah. All right, let's do let's do it. Round one. First game. Yeah. First game. Here's the fake yeah. name. Perished Ascending Four. Perished Nick. Ascending Four. Oh no. Uh Dead Rising Four? Nope. Yes. You got it. Nope. Oh, Dead Rising oh, Four. You know how close I in my head I was like Dead or Alive Four. And then I quickly went, wait, that didn't have Christmas DLC. Yeah. Wait, what's yeah it it might have Christmas <laughs> bikinis, you never know. <laughs> was, yeah, yeah, you never like, know. Oh, no. Uh that is correct. Uh so it's a one one point to Nick. Uh all right. Are we ready for the next game? We're good to go. go, go, go. Yes. Not a bug fellow, distance units, additional spirits. Here. What? <laughs> Not a bug fellow. <laughs> Distance units, additional spirits. I'll put it in private chat for you. Not a bug fellow. Distance is, is that units. all one word? Not a bug fellow? It's in private uh, it chat. It is hyphenated. No. Uh, I'm going to go with sick. Distance units, additional spirits. Marvel's Spider Man Miles Morales. That is correct. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah. Look, more ales, more spirits. Look, how can I do? P pe people's names are never easy to do. I'll, I'll just say yep, that. that's pretty good. That was pretty good. Thank you. Distance units and mor morale for moral. We're all tied up. One, one a piece. Uh, I'm gonna lose track of that real fast, Jesse. So help me keep I've got track. It. We've got a yeah. yeah uh, you're good. You're good. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is a good one. Punch guy. Parentheses DLC. Is the DLC for Punch Guy? DLC for Punch Guy. <laughs> a game Jeff and I love, truly love, like fucking a punch guy. 
I'm going to go play it right after we're done here. How about that? One of the best things to be on Game Pass. I'll say that. Uh huh. Punch Guy. Punch guy. One of the few PC Game Pass games you can play in VR. Punch Guy? Yep. Just literally Punch think what the guy. words are. What do the words mean? Yeah. Idiots. Think about the other synonyms for the both words. Punch Guy. Oh. Nick. Hitman? Hitman? Hitman Holiday Hoarders DLC is correct. Yeah. I wasn't going to do the whole yeah. thing, but yeah. You got it. You nailed it. Okay. Punch you look guy so confused. Hitman. Yeah, I was very confused. Well, I mean, you hit, you punch, guys, mm -hmm. a man. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Two to one, round four ish, I think. Uh, all right. Listen up. Moocher, day before. <laughs> it's Moocher. In private chat. Day before. Moocher. Moocha. Day before. Moocha. Moocha. Day. And then day hyphen before. It's two words total. Classic. And it's Christmas. It takes place during the holiday. Moocher. Day before. <laughs> I want Jeff here for all of these forever. <laughs> <laughs> so much effort. It's beautiful. Even when he's poorly, he's still there. Uh, <laughs> I got you. Day before. I know, I know what day before is. I'm trying to... It's Mucha that's getting me. Was this an original PlayStation game? Yes. Yes. So it was. Mucha, day before. Mucha. It was like big thing after all the RPGs started coming out. Was this a tank control game? I honestly don't remember. I don't know. I can't remember. I reckon. I, I don't know this game. Should push the buzz on. Wow. All right. Just to let him. Utter failure. Uh, Moocher, Baby. as in Parasite. Oh. Eve. Day before, Parasite as in Eve. Eve. Parasite there you go. Eve. Parasite Eve. Eve. There you go. Very wow. Christmassy game. Yep. <laughs> so festive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Next round. One word. So listen up. Ruffian. You're being a real ruffian. Oh, no. Wait, is this a PlayStation game? It was it's an Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 game. Oh, yep. then it's not the game I thought it was. Ruffian. ruffian. One word. Ruffian. Creators of this game have also suffered their own hacks in recent memory. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Nick. Yes, yes. For the Bully. win. That is correct. Nice. Bully. Once again, well John is a massive, massive disappointment. Yeah. Why are you even yeah. here? But, I don't know. A part of me at the start, for some reason, I had Bouncer in my head. That's why I asked if it was a PlayStation game. I had Bouncer in my head, but I was like going full on British like words like hooligan and 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 like <laughs> who? Uh, yeah. For some <laughs> like... reason Bouncer came into my head. I'm it was like, the oh, Hoonigan DLC of Forza Bouncer. Horizon Five, which <laughs> yeah. can be in the winter. Correct. Oh, All right, we yeah, do the rest done. for fun. Go on, go All do right. the rest yeah, for funsies. Hey, this one's truly messed up. I uh, think get this out. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Three. And in parentheses, translation. <laughs> tree. The name of this game <laughs> doesn't it. mean anything. It is just the name of a tree in the game. Yep. I can't make tree. it more direct. It is literally the name tree. of a tree in this classic game that was originally uh, on is, uh, Dreamcast. Yes. So this is, the word is tree. Yep. That's it. It's the yes. name of a tree. It's not even translation for tree. It's just the tree's name. So the tree, the tree has a name. In the, the game. tree has a name. It's a different name than the forklift. <laughs> if you like sailors, you like this game. If you know where they are. Oh, Nick. Forklift. Shenmu. Shenmu is correct. Wow. That means tree. It's the name That's of the, the name tree. Of the I guess tree. So. That is the name Today of the tree. Today I learned. Yeah. Today I learned. All right, it shut up. Next round. Succumb, ridgely, triplicate. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay. Succumb, ridgely, triplicate. Succumb, rigidly. I, I put it it's in chat. Like you just said come rigidly. Like, Succumb, Succumb, rigidly, Succumb. triplicate. Three words. Succumb. This is a game we sh really should know. Succumb, um, rigidly, 
triplicate. This is a game that has a different name in Japan than it has in America because they slapped an IP on it. Yeah, yeah. Succumb. Rigidly. And you could like, there's a lot of arguments about whether or not this is Sick. even Christmas. Die Hard Trilogy. That is correct. Ooh. Finally, yeah, he woke yeah, up. Die Hard. Well done. I, I, I would hard. class it because uh, Die Hard is on the watch list, obviously, for tomorrow evening. Same. Same. Um, yeah. But so it's like Kiss Kiss Bang Bang and like every Shane Black I, movie. Man, so. I, I loved that game on PlayStation, like because it had, had the third person action game, it had the, the the light gun game, and then it had the crazy taxi clone. It was glorious. I it was played so Die Hard Arcade. The Hero Arcade Die is Hard also Arcade. very good. Yeah. Yes. All right, two more. All right. Two more. Commonwealth <laughs> Cores Two. <laughs> Commonwealth Cores Two. Put it in a private chat. I'm waiting for it to appear in private chat. I can't see. Commonwealth. Cores. Commonwealth space cores space two. The next two have uh, similar themes. Yep. Mike Minotti approved. Cores. Any Minotti approved. Mm -mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I know. Nick. Kingdom Hearts 2. That is correct. Wow. Well. Good, good job. All right, that leaves us with, with, leaves us with one more. Uh, here we go. This is th three words, starting with Waltz, Fantasy Illumination, Gully. Fantasy Illumination is hyphenated. Waltz, Fantasy Illumination, Gully. I think this is pretty good for the name of the game. It was, yeah. What's the total number of words for the actual game? Three. Three. Waltz, um, Fantasy Illumination, Gully. Well, I, I know what it is, but I, I can't think of the three words unless it's... <laughs> this is a Game Pass <laughs> game. Yeah, this is a new game. This is a new game. Nick. Uh, Starting the timer. Shit. Time is Disney's going. Disney's Dream... Disney's Dreamlight Valley? Oh, we got it. That is yeah. correct. Uh, <laughs> well done. <laughs> How did you not have knights in this <laughs> list? It's too easy. Evenings, like that's too easy to get. Yeah, GGs, GGs. Well done, both of you. Thank you, thank you. Ended Brilliant really hosting. Strong. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. oh, of course, Brilliant. anytime, yes. anytime. This very is a aggressive. man who has run a game show. <laughs> oh yeah, it was very it's aggressive. Good. It's good. Yeah, that's um, the way. To, that's how we do it in America. Mucha, mucha. Yeah, yeah. Every yeah. time I hear the word mucha, I've just got Blues Brothers in my head. Sure. <laughs> you know, Mini the mucha. Classic <laughs> tune. Um, all right, all right. Well, look, you know, we're coming up on on ten minutes left of of Mr. Grubbs' available two hours, so I guess we can a ask you, please, all three hundred of you watching right now, to just click that like button, hit the like button as we Mooters. click the rumor mill button. It's the rumor mill. Yeah, it make it awkward. Yeah, okay, great. It's the rumor mill. Things change, we can't be sure. It's the rumor mill. You know they may not come true. The Xbox Era podcast is not responsible for websites presenting these rumors as facts. Your crew. I'm always in your podcast. I see Turbo Sean there. Where's Sean? It is Christmas weekend. Where's, where's Mr. McDowell? He's McDaniel? probably dead. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, rumor mill. I think Jeff and I have something for today. I'm going to call this the yeah, rumors mills. Small tidbits, like little things yes, for yes, you. Uh, like, things. honestly, I had a ton of stuff, and then the Game Awards happened, and like everything was there. It was wild. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It was like, oh my God, all these things were true, it turned out. Um, yes. But yeah, I mean, I guess, like, to clarify that, that Jurassic Park game, like, they really are going for alien isolation with that. It should be pretty obvious by what we saw, but like, that's the goal with that game. So that's nice. Um, mm. But okay. Yeah. So. Arcane's Blade. Uh, the, if you are looking for like, hey, when am I going to be able to play that? Right now, internally, they are expecting that to be sold on store shelves and digitally in the year 2027. That is the year that they are aiming for for that game. Uh, that is at least as far as, you know, when you ask Disney and Marvel, whatever they're putting on their calendar, 2027. Wow, so, wow. Yeah, uh, God, where well, that puts us, what, three years out? I guess we're going to be in 2024 here, mm. so uh, that sounds pretty reasonable. How far is that yeah. from Deathloop, though? 
most people expect we're six years. 27. Yep. And it, yeah. yes. Okay. Six years from, from Death Loop 2027 is what they're aiming for right now. But that means 2027 at the earliest. Like, we're, don't yes. expect it before that. I mean, at that point, Dark it could Dark well everyone. be on, on new hardware. Yeah, like, could, realistically could speaking, it could be on I mean, I wouldn't be surprised hardware. if it's a cross gen game, as in Series X to next thing cross gen. Yep. Yeah. And that's, there, there's been a lot of speculation about that as well. And that's why 2027 mm. is far enough out that. We definitely could be looking at new hardware by then, for sure. Mm. Like um, a launch title. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah, for real. Uh, maybe that's why they're not saying it's for Xbox Series X. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's what we said. We yeah. said the same thing. Maybe there's no logo because they don't want to reveal the new Xbox yet. Yeah. Jeez, that's messed up when you think about it like that. Um, the other one I is know. like, okay, there's that... Um, id software is working on mandalorian i'll just say Where i looked did at, that come from no idea but i'll say that i looked into it and there's no evidence to suggest that that's true as far as i can find that's how i'll phrase I it i couldn't find I anything hadn't heard about anything that. like that either i've never I, heard I anything heard... about that and then i looked into it and still couldn't find anything so talked to a, I talked I to a couple people to including a very good source and they're like that I can't. If it's real, I don't know, and that usually means it's. I not swear real. to God, I think it came from people speculating about what it could be on Resetra, and then people on Twitter mm. just running with it. Yeah, yeah. that sounds, sounds about completely I've, plausible. I've heard stuff about Mando, but I have not heard that it is making Mando. It's, all, it's not also not in like that. a natural fit. Like it, it can make whatever they want. It, They're a great developer. Yeah, it doesn't but seem let fit it be to me it. either. Yeah, totally. I would. I would have assumed a Quake reboot would be next on the guards from these guys, but. Quite considering yeah, the success seems, they had with Doom, but seems likely they seems like they want to do something with Quake. Uh, yeah. so we'll see. Hmm. Yep. Hmm. Hey, those are the just small little things I could bring here for you. Little, little, something. yeah, little sprinkles for the end of the year. Yeah, absolutely. Grubsmas Hall. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Jeff just yeah, unloading sure. his sack. Sorry, I'm just gonna start yelling that randomly. <laughs> Moocher. Uh, okay. Now my now I said last week that I was. I personally was quite excited by this rumor mill, but I don't think a lot of the people watching would be very excited. I would. No, it's not Fortnite. Now, uh, I, I for a long time have been a person who has bemoaned the direction God of War went somewhat and have yearned for the hack and slash OG God of War games. I, I just, I love them so much. Same. And when I heard this might be happening i told a friend of mine who also loves the og god of war trilogy that this might be happening and they got very excited and i've heard that we might be getting the og god of war trilogy remastered on playstation <clears throat> now I, okay. I i don't know I, i'm not 100 percent sure if it's announced 2024 maybe release 2024 or release 2025 or it's re released 2024 i'm that part i'm not clear on but what i've heard is og god of war trilogy remaster and i was like oh you do know you just talked please. it by guessing when it might be or saying you don't know just saying the no, year i said i don't know i said i don't matter. know you know what the headlines are gonna be <laughs> they're gonna be 2024 along with the switch to in a couple days from jeff yep well i'm already i'm sure uh, I, said mm. I, mm. I know anyway but yes anyone clipping this he doesn't know when I don't know that, when. Is it God of War 1, 2, and 3? What, where's Ascension? Uh, I just got told Trilogy, so I assume that means 1, 2, and 3. Wow. Ascension erasure. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm I didn't so mind gonna, Ascension. I don't care about Ascension. Yeah, but, but, I mean, whatever. You can include it or not. I didn't mind it. Yeah, sure. Uh, it. But God, God of War 1, 2, and 3, that's where it's at for me. Yeah. So, Again, yeah. The, the other thing I'm not clear on and I want to get more detail on, is this, is this a straight-up port of what we got on ps3 right in which case i'm somewhat less excited or is this something a little more involved more in the remake realm where you're getting that i yeah, think they could do like a metroid prime re remaster sort of thing oh, uh big boy god, remake or be... big boy remaster that would be pretty good oh my god i just still have the sex so mini excited. games oh yeah oh, so excited <laughs> I'm, I'm so excited those... <laughs> Those old God of War games, like just man, yep, amazing, amazing. <laughs> anyway. I got a call out Assassin Entertainment in the chat. Nick, wait, you got news on God of War, but not Gears of Gears. War. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, <laughs> if I get an update, I'll pass it on. I haven't got an update. 
they, like, they, they got they to do He's something in the chat. with ears. I, I'd like, ah, oh, there's Mike. Hey, Mike Mike's Minotti. In the chat. Mary, Mary Grub Grub He's you. missing an well, S. Mike. It's not a grubmus. My goodness, Mike. A massive grub. Massive grub. They got to do something like to get excitement going for Gears because that you know they they're going to take a little bit of extra time because they weren't necessarily going to jump right into Gear Six and then they changed their mind on that. So uh, something's probably still going to happen. So yes. I, 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 also, I definitely I definitely have been sent rumors that what you said previously about the Gears collection is still possible, but I just don't I cannot confirm it. So. Is it yep. is it the case that they were developing a new IP, but now they're not, and now they're just yes. All in they were going to do six? two new things, and then they they put both of those on the shelf, and they're going back to gears. They were going to wow. mess around with some new stuff with, yeah, that for a long time. That's what I was told. It seemed like they wanted to uh, get their feet under them with Un Unreal Engine five in a big way, and I think they're like, actually, we we did that pretty quickly, and we're good to go. So I think they're like, yeah, let's just get back to yeah, gears. They've been helping so many other people mm. with Unreal Engine five that I'm exactly sure, that's know. that's what I think happened. Yes. Yeah, I suppose they did a lot of work on the Matrix demo as well with Unreal. So. And supposedly, exactly. uh, State of Decay three is like really going in in Undead Labs and their animation stuff. They're they're going all out in Unreal Engine. Yep. Cool. Mm. Cool. Either all way, right. I'm very excited for the God of War trilogy. Yeah, me too. That'd be great. I, God, I, I uh, the amount of love I have for those first three God of War games. To me, they are the good God of War games. Not that the two new ones are bad. I just prefer that hack and slash fixed camera style for God of War. Same. I, I will admit somewhat of a bias because it's based on Greek mythology as well. So there is a little bit of bias. Oh, there. Homer. You're a real Homer. I see. <laughs> <laughs> like what? Like that was one of the only games where my wife would just sit down and watch me play and make me watch the cutscenes of God of War. Because yeah. she just she loves Greek mythology and she would just I wouldn't be allowed to skip them. She'd be like, no. Nah. I'd have to sit there and watch them. She wanted wow, to watch the only the game that would get scenes. you to watch cutscenes. Who'd have thunk it? Who'd have wife. thunk it? My wife. My wife. <laughs> but yes. That's it. <laughs> I thought that was a pretty good Grubsmith's rumor mill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, like again, it's like everyone's got off for the year. <laughs> the people that would like yeah. send me stuff or would know stuff, they're on vacation. So it was a, a very fun uh, Game Awards in terms of announcements and to come out of that with like, oh, there's a couple of things still happening. It's nice to be able to share it somewhere. I, yeah. I may have sneakily dropped one earlier in the show. Ooh. I was getting stuff. I was getting DMs. I don't know if there was moments where you could see me looking down typing furiously because I was getting DMs. And they were like, put this in your rumor mill. I was like, I don't know. It like, doesn't seem like a rumor mill type of thing. They're like, all right, bring it up in conversation. So I did. <laughs> Well, right. Now people will scan through. I find everybody scan through. You'll pick, it up. You'll pick it up. It wasn't. It wasn't sneakily hidden. It was part of our conversation. Fair, fair. But that's it. So I don't know. I don't know how Jeff's feeling. If Jeff is feeling up for community questions, then that's fine. Hammer if not, yeah. If we can get through them pretty quickly, I should be good. All we right. Will. Okay. We'll, we'll make Quick Nick shut around. the fuck up and not just lax weird. Well, that doesn't seem possible. Ah, oh, well, we've got a special button for that now, Jeff. Maybe Ooh, we'll do it. Oh, yeah. technology. Haven't yeah, you had want... to use it today. We haven't had to use it today yet. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, we've got There's the wrap the it up. Uh, wrap it up. Music comes in and, the, you know, Keely comes up and just... The Jeff Keeley wrap, <laughs> wrap it ups. Wrap it ups. Okay. All right, okay. Community <laughs> questions. All right. As always, uh, you know, it would be remiss of me on the Grubsmith special to not say a massive thank you for the year of support all of our patrons have given us. Mm. One of the exclusive perks of being a patron is you do get to annoy uh, us and whatever guest we have on at the time with community mm -hmm. questions every week. We'd like them to be 150 characters or less, but you guys just don't give a shit. <laughs> Let's dive in. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash Xbox here if you do want to pledge your support as a Christmas present to, to us. If not, we'll see you in 2020 four uh but we've never got one more show we've got one more show before the end of the year so we'll be back for like the the night before new year's eve whatever that is but yes. yeah community yes. questions let's go okay first one jesse brother uh merriest of grubsmas unto you all especially you jess yeah as you and you as well mr grub and saint special nick now that we've seen some game of the year lists a good one from jesse nick and soul blazers had great number one picks Sorry, Jess. Alan Wake 2 was the correct choice. We know it won't be John's pick. 
He'll probably choose something dumb like Cocoon if he hasn't already. Yeah, I did. Cocoon was awesome. Shut up. Cocoon's very good. Uh, my <laughs> question is for this episode's seminal character one, Jeff Grubb. What is your personal game of the year? Merry Christmas, everybody. Yeah, this was tough for me. We did our Game of the Year special out live out in LA. It was a very, very good time. It was awesome to have people come out and watch that. And uh, the night before, I was kind of going back and forth. Uh, and I ended up going with my heart. And I said Pikmin 4. Pikmin 4 is my really? game of the year. I adore Pikmin 4. Yeah, I've, I've always Not liked Tears Pikmin. Of the Kingdom. Tears of the Kingdom is number two. Uh, and okay. Tears of the Kingdom was number one up until that night before. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, you know, I, I just like... If I was going to go replay any game from this year right now, and I know I would have still a really great time with it, it would be Pikmin 4. And I think that's kind of what put me over the top wow. for that. I, and I, okay. Pikmin, again, always liked it. Uh, but Pikmin 3 Deluxe is where it's like, oh, they really have figured out the loop here. And then Pikmin 4 is even better than that. And just so mm. precise in that gameplay mechanic loop that I, um, yeah, I adore it. It's nice. 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 Good answer. Okay. Uh, ooh, Shady Pine Steve. Our new favorite patron. Happiest of holidays to everyone at Xbox Era and to special guest Grub. What's your favorite holiday song? Keep up the good work, Nick and Grub. Wow. <laughs> How the turntables. Wow. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. Nick and Grub. That's gone from not even mentioning me at all. Jeez. <laughs> Jeez. Favorite hurt. holiday song, Last Christmas, George Michael. Ugh. I like I like Ugh. almost all all Christmas songs. I don't think none of them bother me. Uh, Darlene loves Christmas, baby. Please come home. That's actually my favorite. And what it is is uh, okay. every year uh, at Christmas time, David Ledman would have his big Christmas episode before mm-hmm. he would go off for the holidays, and it would be sent off by Darlene Love coming out and singing with Paul Schaefer and the whole CBS orchestra. Yeah, yeah. And it was just so magnificent, and they just nailed it every year. And so for me, it's like, oh, that that is Christmas. And so, yeah, yeah Darwin yeah, loves yeah, yeah. Christmas. I, I hate all Christmas music, but if I have to pick anything, it's going to be the, you know, the old school crooner style. It's beginning to look a lot sure. like Christmas. You don't like George Michael? No, mate. I mean, also, I, I play Whamageddon every year, right? So, like, naturally, I've been trained to despise that song and switch my ears off but if it hurts. But it's such an incredible song. Yeah. Even, even taking away the fact that it's based on christmas it last christmas by i mean most of george michael's music is incredible but last christmas oh, come on george michael is wrap it up so sad when he died. <laughs> i was so sad when he died i'm so glad i got to see him in 2010 live before <laughs> like i got to see a live performance like recently before he passed away was, oh, i love george michael so much. <laughs> Uh, I love it. Oh, God. Okay. Next question. Uh, Hi, Thub G. So, two more days of Christmas, making sure all of you gents are on the nice list and not on the naughty list. Or you've been given a coal or worst crumpus. Please. But in your childhood days of celebrating Christmas, what present did you gents have from your childhood days on Christmas? And what would it be growing up you wanted for Christmas from your past? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure what the question is. I think if you were, uh, okay, if you were to get a present today from your childhood, what, what would you want it to be? Let's just go with that. I want, my Sega, right, Sa- I want my Sega Tower of Power back. I had the whole thing. I want that yeah, back. Yeah, I want my Game Gear. I want my, uh, my Game Boy Color uh, with, like, all the games right there. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. All my video game presents came on my birthdays. I never wow. got them at Christmas. Yeah, the big one for me was a birthday. It was the NES for my fifth birthday. Like, I remember this vividly of like going through the. Mm. They had a. They, they did a, a one of those games where you have to like find the clues. What's that called? A, a scavenger hunt. Yeah, uh, yeah. And yeah. I, got, I got the NES in the you know in the bathtub uh, at the very wow. end of the rainbow. Mm. Um, and that was, but that was for a birthday. So for Christmases, it was yeah. like, oh yeah. Eventually, like Steph would get me my wife, my wife uh, would get me like a PS4 and a cool like the cool 3DS XL Mario and Luigi one that I wanted and all that stuff. She oh, got really wow. good at giving me gifts. So yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nice. see, I got a Game Gear for my 12th birthday, and I still have that Game Gear to this day <laughs> from '92. From 1992, I still have that Game Gear. <laughs> oh, I love, I love it. it. Uh, 
I will never yeah. tire of Jeff Keeby giving us that that bit for the rest Wrap of our up. lives. Wrap it up. He does have a okay. PS. He does. Uh, he does. How do you defy? How do you define? I think it's defy. It's probably meant to say. Yeah, but Def- I don't think it's meant to be defy. I don't think it's meant to be how do you defy Christmas. No, That's not strongly Christian. I defy Christmas. That's not strongly a Christian holiday where it feels like a pagan holiday. Your gents take. Uh, no one cares. It's just. Is an I, excuse to have fun. I, thought he was I think about this constantly, actually, because uh, <laughs> it's um, you could tell like how the holiday happened because it's like a few days after the sun starts getting higher in the air in the sky. So it's like people are like, the sun is going down and it's not going back up. Are we? Are, is the sun going to go away forever? And then the sun starts going back up. Like we have to have a party. We have to have a party. <laughs> the sun's coming back, everybody. And it's like I, I just think about that every year when like the shortest day of the year, and then a couple of days later there's a party. Well, there oh. is the the general religious metaphor of you know like the the death of the sun and yep. then the rebirth and it's renewal. And, you know, and they move. And that's what a lot of religions are based The evergreen on. tree that, like, the life everlasting and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah, of course. Yeah, because yeah, Jesus like was shit. like July, but they it was moved. It, it was about converting. I thought people. it was February or something. Like yeah, that. it, it was know. nowhere near December twenty fifth. But you move things yeah. around, and then it's it just becomes meet, an allegory yeah, the for a while. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Play the music. Uh, yeah, no, but we're, we're having, answering a good you know, question. Yeah. You're boring. Next question. This ass. Next question. Thanks, Hyper. Uh, Big Low 25. Hey, Nick and Jeff, any hope for better marketing and localization from Xbox in 2024 for their games? Also hoping for a develop- developer direct in January and more broadcast from Xbox besides the dead E3 adjacent one. I think they are going to be better at marketing going forward. They've, they've been improving, I think. Yeah, um, localization. Yeah, well, no. Right, especially in some territories that have been asking for that. Sorry. Yeah, mm. they, they really need to sort that shit out for a trillion They should be better in Japan now that they have an actual Japanese organization, you would hope. Yeah. But I'm yeah. also, yeah. I have always stuck by the fact that I really think that they were not marketing a lot. They were not doing anything a lot until ABK was done. And then it finished yeah. and they shot out like a cannon being everywhere all the time. I mean, they and they, when I talked to him on the couch, they're like, yeah, you can expect us to have more stuff more frequently at more shows. Mm-hmm. And then we saw them at Summer Game or um, Game of the Year, and they're going to have more stuff going forward, I think. They, they were at yeah. every uh, show. Uh, they were at Gamescom. They were at TGS. Yeah. They've been everywhere. Do you yep. think we'll get a developer direct yes. in January again? I think, I I think it's firmly, likely. I am firmly of the belief we'll get a January Just to set direct. the year up again. Like, here's yeah. the year. Let's yeah. go. Yep. So, yep. Sign me up. I think all three companies okay. are kind of going to be raring to go pretty early next year with stuff to talk about. Mm. No. Nice. Assassin Entertainment. Happy holidays to the prideful prince, <laughs> Special Nick, and the Lord of Leaks, Jeff Grubster. With Christmas around the corner, it's time for my annual tradition of pizza, root beer, and die hard on Christmas Eve night. What about you fellas? What's your Christmas traditions, if you have any? For all I know, Nick could leak our Santa Claus list. Uh, P.S. I normally don't like asking for gifts, but I got to ask one thing: Will the Banjo Bros have a good year next year? Happy holidays to John and Jesse as well. The Banjo <sighs> Bros. Basically, will there be a Banjo Kazooie? Banjo Kazooie, something. something uh, Banjo Kazooie. I don't know if you're gonna have a good year next year. I, I would love for that to be true, but you know. Oh man, it's we'll coming. See. It's, it's got. I coming. think it's yeah, yeah, exactly. Like Christmas just, tradition. Uh, yeah. Um. Let's see. We do a Christmas train every year where we go on a train and it's like themed like Christmas and it kind of just goes nice. in a big circle. It, go, it takes us to the North Pole and the kids wear like pajamas and stuff like that, like they're in Polar oh. Express. And then Santa comes on there and we, we like uh, we say hi to him and take pictures. And then on Christmas Eve, we go to hibachi. That's dad's favorite tradition. Mm-hmm. Um, go to a Japanese hibachi grill and we get really good steak and, and food. And then uh, we go home and we watch Christmas movies all night. And that's nice. what we're doing tomorrow. I can't wait. As long yeah, as I'm feeling good. Cool. I'm gonna like, yeah. uh, need a bathroom break from the hibachi. And, uh, I'll, I'll make it happen if I have to. <laughs> what about you, Nick? Mine, mine is so I, I don't know how this started, but it started when we were little. We do Christmas Eve more so than Christmas Day, strangely. 
growing okay. up. Like we did a big thing on Christmas Eve and sure. one a relative would dress up as Santa Claus and come through the door and all the kids would be like, oh my God, it's Santa Claus. And he'd come <laughs> with a big bag of presents and he'd sit down in a chair and start, he'd grab a present from the bag and read out the kid's name and the kid would have to come out and sit on his lap and they take photos and, all, and it just became this thing every year that we did. So we're doing that later tonight at my auntie's Fine. place. Um, and yeah, it, it's evolved obviously now, and we all have kids. So okay, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding we all have one. kids. So our kids now get all get very excited at the presents they're going to get from Santa Claus and stuff. And yeah, it's good. It's good. Uh, I like it. I don't have a huge number of traditions. Die Hard, Muppets Christmas Carol for tomorrow, um, and I make these incredible fennel. Uh, hot sausage rolls which are like the appetizer before the the big roast dinner right that that mm-hmm. is pretty much it otherwise i'm firmly of the you know everyone the only thing i stipulate is everybody has to wait until everyone is present and no one just tears into stuff and rips everything open it is mm-hmm. the santa hat gets donned the the father of the house and then i will in turn hand out presents and everybody watches that person so that it's not just over in 10 minutes but that's it that's my christmas traditions pretty much there is one other tradition that Jeff and I take part in. That's right. Grubs mess. Every year. <laughs> <laughs> so Rain or shine. All, yeah. Illness or no. That's right. So, but, mate, and every I year, I didn't do it at the start because John rushed us too much. Every year, I tell the story of Grubsmas. Have right. to, out of respect, <laughs> the moral of Grubsmas. Mate, have is there to a tell moral? the story of Grubsmas. How Jeff, who barely knew us back then, our podcast was only like six months old back then. And, and you, you know, were abandoned by John, I believe. John <laughs> abandoned me very yep. late in the game. And I, I was fran- I'm like, I, I never, I never want to miss an episode. I was still very firm in my commitment of never skipping an episode. And I was like, I'm going to have to do this by myself. And I was like, you know what? I'll just reach out to Jeff just to see. He doesn't even know who I am, but we'll see. I said, hey, Jeff, any chance, you know, I know it's Christmas. I'm sorry, blah, blah, blah. Want to jump on? He's like, yeah, let's do it. I was like, oh, no way. And, and what last Was last year the one where we like, we did it on the Boxing Day or we did a Boxing Day one? Yeah, like, it, we're, it, like, it always oh. falls depending yep. on where the Sunday is. Yeah, but yep. um, yes, in on around. So, and I'm forever grateful because that was a very big deal of course. Of course. for Jeff to do that at Christmas time. Of Last course. Minutes. Man's a legend. Man's a legend. I got you. Got your backs. Okay. Awesome. Uh, Rue Grabu. It looks like that public stance about leaks seems to shift a bit. It is funny, though. It had to change after a beloved PlayStation studio was hacked. I wonder if it would be the same if Ninja Theory or Bethesda Studios would have been the victims of the hack. Are the days gone of outlets reporting on leaks, or will they change course again as soon as an Xbox studio gets hacked? P.S. I have to admit, I'm a bit disappointed that the X-Men IP seems to be locked up by PlayStation after already imagining how an X-Men game could look. I won't play it anyway, so I can stop thinking about it now. <laughs> I'm surprised there wasn't more talk about an X-Men game just out and being revealed. <laughs> right. yeah. like, I was like, whoa, hold on a second. Yep. X-Men game? Yeah, it's like, that, that, I mean... It's hard to imagine at this point, but I guess at a certain point, it's like, wouldn't you just take what they do with like Spider-Man swapping between characters... And you do that writ large, uh, and it makes a lot of sense. Mm. I, I don't know. It's um so easy to imagine bad versions of these games. And it's like yes. I, I think people are like, let me see it, let me see it, and then I'll get excited. A uh, big part yeah. of that is that. And then yeah, people were hesitant to talk about the leaks because they were getting called scum and stuff like that. I'll, yeah. I, the way the question started of like, hey, you know, some people, you know, the the, the it, it changes depending on what it is. I just got to recommend, let's not keep score. It's It never helps to keep score on like what people do and don't. Like everyone is a hypocrite at some point. Like you are mm. going to have differing positions depending on the scenario. And uh, and like, you know, I I didn't want to play Hogwarts Legacy because it was like, it was going to hurt my friend's feeling. That's what they told me. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, I won't, I won't play it. But it's like, either the people are like, well, why didn't you play this? It's like, no, nah, yeah, in this situation, I have a very specific reason. That's what it is. I, I mean, do you want me to be completely consistent? Are you always 100% consistent? Yeah. yeah. No, it's not <laughs> worth keeping score on what other people do. I saw the tweet at you, Jeff. It was, uh, how do you feel about Hogwarts selling real well? It's like, yeah, I feel nothing. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Good for them. Absolutely I, nothing. I, yes. Again, I'll fall back on what I said earlier. As long as everyone is upfront and a bit more transparent, it's better for them if they're upfront too. Yes. 
most reasonable people won't have an issue with it if if we're just up front about it. It's like it. that crime and cover up thing. Sometimes a cover up's a lot worse. The, your reaction to not a crime in this, but yeah, it's just the way people are going to look at you is going to be based on how how you behaved, even yep. if you didn't do anything. Yep. I will say that that link to X Men seems obvious because we, as we discovered, Jean Grey is playable in Wolverine. So there's your setup for the X Men yep. game later. Definitely. The only yeah. thing I worry about is as <laughs> worry about Insomniac seem to have a template down for 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 the Spider Man games, right? Which is as a studio, they they are very quick at producing these. And if mm. X Men then falls in under that template, and then the X Men game falls again in under that general template of what these games are, at what point is there is there going to be fatigue? You know, just the yeah. IP there's, carry it. I mean, there's going to be diminishing returns. Yeah, yeah. and it, so, will I be able to change it up? But like now, it's the X Men, and that that will help. But there will be diminishing returns. That's that is one of the mm. biggest issues that Sony is going to deal with on their big two hundred to three hundred million dollar games is. The next one has to be bigger, and there's just no guarantee that you're going to be able to justify selling more uh, when it's, you know, it's the same thing. It's the same thing as last time, but bigger. It's like, yeah, that works a couple yeah, yeah. of times. It's not going to work indefinitely. And their time frames yeah. have been really fast because they've been spending so much, and they're not, they're looking to not spend as much. So, how do, are they able to keep up with their time frames? What, can they staff up if they also have to cut people? Does that just mean there is no Ratchet and Clank? that was talked about because you've got to shift all those people over. It's it's going to be tough. I, I alluded to it yesterday. What like X-Men is so far away now, and now so is Wolverine most likely. What happens if PlayStation suffers from the same thing Marvel movies are suffering from a little bit now? Fatigue. Yeah. Yep. I mean, in, and, right. Five, six years later, the thing that you made a deal for now, you got, you got to see it through. <laughs> like you're, you're pot yeah. committed. Yep. Just, just like it's the tough. Marvel movies, their budgets haven't really gone down. Their budgets are oh, still yeah, messy. No way. Yep. But they're not doing as well because people are just starting to get over it just a little bit. And no yeah. one has any money, which is not going to help either. Yeah, well, that too. For everything. Okay. Executive producer, Torn Raptor. Merry Grubsmas to all. Next year looks to be an exciting one, especially for Xbox and Nintendo. Let's discard Xbox talk, as I know you two don't care for it, and discuss what you expect for Nintendo in 2024. <laughs> Give your best guess or biggest hope of what the new system's name will be. Try to be original. No no Switch 2 or Super Switch. No, Super Switch expect, is right. It has to be the Super Nintendo Switch. It has it to be the Super Nintendo Switch. We, this is why... 100%. This is why, it, like, you know it is, because, like, we all agree. Like, we immediately were like, no, that's right. That, be, be that would rule. Yes. So it probably I, won't be, I, but it should be. I, I said this on Fame's podcast. I put out a tweet a couple of years ago with I had done the logo up with the SNES font and everything. It's a Super Nintendo Switch, exactly like Super Nintendo Entertainment System, but with Super Nintendo Switch. It's like a tag Nintendo. I'm like, just do it. Take it. Just do it. They, use they've it. got to. Like, it's the perfect name. It is if the they come up with name. something stupid like the Nintendo Poop, like I'm going to be annoyed. Just, just. <laughs> Call it the Super Nintendo Switch and be done with it. Now, in terms of what I think 2024, if the Switch 2 or the Super Nintendo Switch is 2024, which I suspect it is, it, yeah. it almost has to be at this point. Yeah, and I, like it was a joke, like, oh, hey, the, the, the R4 flash cart that enables people to play any game on their Switch, whether it's uh, no matter what the OS is. Uh, a big reason for Nintendo moving on is security and cyber so, and being mm. able, like in hacking uh they've already been thinking about that making sure their next one's more secure if it gets easier mm. they'll be very ready to move on and i think they're pretty malleable yep. about exactly when that system's going to launch because their marketing campaign is going to be three to six months at most for that thing probably in, in a, like the real marketing campaign and so they could shift that around pretty easily i think i'm curious if they would ever go and ask uh, xbox what they did with the xbox one and moving on because that's the one that's like never been hacked of yeah, all the modern stuff you've been able to get into pretty much everything else even a ps5 yep though even though they took away the web browser that everyone yeah used to use. i mean it's probably so bespoke right it's probably gonna be so yeah. different for the hardware that it's probably difficult well, it's to like replicate. it's a block on there that they have mm -hmm. that people just have not been able to get around yeah uh, now, in, yeah go ahead nick i was gonna say in terms of launching most would expect like maybe like a super mario odyssey 2 to be the launch title for this game and something mario i, I pray it is Here's some speculation. 
Uh-oh. What if Nintendo decides to shock everyone and go with Mario Kart 9? Well, that seems pretty likely too, I think. Because, I mean, they they had to have been working on something in the Mario Kart team all this time. I know they did the DLC. Yeah, sure. In the first year, I do think we get a new Mario Kart. I think we we do. And also be Mario Kart 10, because they consider the mobile game to be Mario Kart 9, because they're sickos. Oh, do they? Yeah, they're, mm. they're deviants. <laughs> yes. They're, they're uh, okay, nuts. So, okay, Absolutely. I just... I, I just went off the console. And Tears of the Kingdom remastered for the Super Nintendo Switch, obviously, right? No, I, I don't reckon. I, I think they have a um, a solution for playing your Switch games on this new device that probably does have some improvements because uh, NVIDIA probably will have some stuff mm. just built into the hardware, and that's how they'll, they'll pitch that stuff. I think what actually is it, uh, the, the next year is the games that are announced – I th- I still think Metroid Prime Four gets announced and released oh, for the Switch before the Switch, the Super Nintendo Switch, and then and that, so that means over the summer at some point, and then we get to uh, Super Nintendo Switch in the holiday period, and that it does have probably something Mario, and then the the promise of Mario Kart Nine, if not at launch, very quickly after, and then you imagine and then they're set for the generation, though? right? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. And then I message Absolutely. Nintendo okay. PR, I get a free Super Nintendo Switch, and Nick gets really pissed. Yeah. I mean, listen, if, you shouldn't live in Australia. I, I know. <laughs> and you know what's funny, buddy, is Nintendo Australia is actually usually really good like that. I actually reached out to them, and it was like, oh, you know, I know we're Xbox era. Well, 2024, maybe we <laughs> launch PC era, PlayStation era, Xbox well, I era, stream VR enough. Era. I was able to just show them that I, hey, I stream all the time. So it's like, okay, yeah, here you go. Oh, thanks. Okay. Hey, shit, Nick. Can you, I could mean, you imagine if they launch with Mario Kart though? Like that that game will sell close to 100 million copies. Oh yeah. It'll sell. It'll sell close to 100 million copies. I think it doesn't I mean, work do very well. <laughs> we have a super chat. It. Yeah. Oh, do we? Yeah. Uh, where is it? We're gonna go oh, quick. Yeah. Christian five nine one six. Merry Merry Christmas. Let's hope we get an Xbox by Sega announcement in 2024. Oh, God. I would love that. Especially now that Sega's tapping back into their old school well, vibe and their back catalog. Oh, God. Yeah, I still think there's something Game Pass going on there with the whole we're partnering with Microsoft on the Super, super Game. game. This is I reckon part super, of that game. super Game. Sega effort. loves working with Xbox right now. And I think they're, and, that doesn't mean that they'll get acquired, but they are very happy with their partnership deal. Yeah, and maybe like it's they probably... will launch all of these small games will launch on Game Pass Day One. Oh, maybe, maybe, or, or maybe there's some sort of like marketing thing going on in the background where they're working on a mar- I don't know something. There'd yeah. be something. All um, right, come on, we got six left. Six left. Stri- they're all short now as well. Okay, okay. Uh, anorexic. Happy holidays, and to those that celebrate, I wish you a joyous and splendid Christmas. It sounds like Sega's early plans for some of the super game titles, uh, like Just Set Radio and Crazy Taxi, were for them to be multiplayer live service titles akin to Fortnite with mention of NFTs. How confident are you all in Sega not screwing up these beloved titles? (laughs) It it depends on the developers they get. So we've all but confirmed Lizard Cube is on Shinobi, which is just unbelievable but we don't seem to know the others. Like, Streets of Rage, to me, should be with Slow Clap. I don't. I doubt it is, but Slow Clap would be a perfect fit. Sure. For Streets of Rage. Crazy Taxi and Jet Set, your guess is as good as mine. I have no idea. I don't know. Yeah. I, I mean, I, it's Sega, and they have... Um, a decent handle on some things, and they're still a really bad company in a lot of ways, but... They seem to be trending in the right direction. So I think it's okay to get optimistic and you get your hopes up for these games. Yes. Let's keep it real. Sega could still beef it in a big way with all of them. Uh, but uh, you have my permission to get your hopes up because I think there's a better chance than not that these things are going to be pretty cool and pretty exciting. Yeah. It felt like just from the announcement alone that they knew. Like... Well, they're doing exactly what, what Phil Spencer said in that letter, right? Every other company. Mm-hmm. Hey, do, like, are they, are they building brand affinity? beyond just our games are big and expensive and they matter because we spent 300 million dollars on them it's like no they're going back to the well in a strong way and they're building a strong sega brand identity it's like yeah good they're the only ones doing that uh, other than capcom and capcom obviously knows what they're doing with like resident evil and monster hunter and keeping mm-hmm. those coming out sure but then sega's like well we we have another way of doing that and that's pretty cool to see yeah yes i agree very cool um 
I, I have faith that all Tempo. war will be good. Question. Even More golden questions. Ass. Go faster. Okay. Creaky yeah. Lips. What kind of dream wedding would you both want? Venue, food, music choice. What kind of rings do you want? Bridesmaids? This is clearly a question for you two. Yeah. Just you two. I want, Cheers, I want a spinner silly. ring. I want a ring that that's, uh, has like those spins, so it could be like a fidget spinner sort of thing. Um, <laughs> I, I think I want it to be. I want it to be gold. Yeah. Uh, or platinum. white gold. White gold. Uh, wh- white gold. Sure. Yes. Yeah. I want it to be kind of yeah. sparkly and and silvery. Um, yeah, yeah. And then my cousin's a jeweler. I'll organize something. Oh, fantastic. Well, all Greeks are jewelers, right? Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> Is that a stereotype? I think so. I don't know. Uh, and then uh, the dream venue. I don't know. Some Mediterranean island. <laughs> she would look so yeah. handsome. Yeah, Santorini somewhere in Santorini yeah. overlooking the water. Overlooking the water. Yeah, at sunset. Music choice would be interesting because I'm big into house music, but I doubt Jeff is. Uh, I would be That's fine with that. That'd be a pretty good vibe for a wedding, I think. <laughs> in Santorini especially. Oh, well, yeah, of course. The locals would love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so romantic okay. nice it's beautiful da game uh mary grubsmas quick question after my whopper last week do we know what's going on with project suerte max hoberman of certain affinity said he thought a company would share more on what he thought was suerte in december but no luck this is uh, their monster hunter project like right? Yep, oh, okay. uh, I haven't heard anything new about it in quite some time. Uh, I, you know, I, it's probably coming along, but this feels like the kind of thing that we could hear about it next year, or it could still be a ways off. I have no idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the game I'm uh, like I most like I want to hear about that Wu Tang game that we heard like mm-hmm. oh, there's a city working on Wu Tang game with Microsoft. And it's like man, I wish they would announce that. That'd be cool. Well, there was some rumors that popped up via Tom Henderson and Insider Gaming end of the year, just in terms of detailing a bit more about it, but we haven't seen much right so yeah maybe who knows developer direct (laughs) they do another hi-fi rush here's the routine okay what that would rule (laughs) that'd be fantastic i I still just want to see perfect dark yeah same i just want to see perfect dark yep we got to see it in 2024 right i mean we got to see it at least yeah the stuff is very we're just we're just ordinary men you sound like that right now nick (laughs) i love that i love that we're just, order, we're just normal men. We're just normal we men. We just need to see Perfect Dark. We just need to see Perfect Dark. It's just, I just a normal want to game. See something. I want to see something from it. I just need to game. see it. It's just a normal game. <laughs> Next question. Okay. 99 Rickon. Hello, super short question. Open world or linear games? Explain why. Oh, Jesus. Easy I mean, question. You all know my answer. Come on. Yeah, yep, my, mine is mine is open, please. Oh, is yep. it yep. really? Wow. Yeah, absolutely. Give me sandbox. Give me stuff where I can make my own fun, emergent fun. Wow. We're like we're we're playing Lethal Company right now with Giant yeah. Bomb a bunch, and it's like that's oh that's better than most most video games. Like all these moments of just like our own fun coming out of nowhere. It's like where we bucks. just do something stupid. Like yeah, that's 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 wow. my jam. Yep. I, it, it depends on the context. Open world with friends. Where that sure. emergent sound like Sea of Thieves is a great example of that. Best gaming experience I've ever had doing that. But generally, yeah, I, I am so tired of every linear. game having to be an open world. Give me hyper linear. Give, hold my hand, take extra a linear, put I, me down I, a corridor. I, I get way too bored. I get distracted. Yeah. I get like you're talking to like, angry old men. I'm with you, Jeff. <laughs> put, <laughs> put me down a dark, narrow corridor with like <laughs> Don't even need to move waist, the stick left or right. Yeah, just push straight high, forward. Buddy. Yeah, 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 that would drive me crazy. No way. Yeah. <laughs> Give me Elden Ring. No. Show me a big field and all this shit. Yeah. The distance I'm going to go look at. I don't at. ever oh. want to feel like I'm pressing, like actually just pressing a play button. Uh, like, oh, and the, the video's happening before. That's me. what killed me with Spider-Man 2 yeah. when I was playing it on my kid's PlayStation is most of the cuts, quick time events are just press a button to succeed. Yeah. You can't fail. Definitely. It doesn't matter. Like, but it's still a good game. It just drives me crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All Next right. question. Oh, yeah. I'm I'm all about that linear. Uh okay. Good old Collingwood. Happy holidays, John, Nick, and Jesse, and welcome back, Mr. Grub. Mr. Grub, what is the favorite story that you wrote from the entire of twenty twenty three? 
Uh, well, I, I actually didn't do much writing in 2023, so I guess my favorite story would be the one I just did for startmenu.co.uk, uh, which is uh, Lexi's website where she uh, got a bunch of people to come over and write, uh, like kind of like do retrospectives for the year. And I, I wrote about Suica game, actually, and I wrote about how uh, I was definitely thinking about these big budget games and the PlayStation problem. And um, like, hey, yeah, people think games are important because they're told they're important because they're, they're told they're expensive and that it never affects a kid and so when i hand a kid a, a video mm -hmm. game it's like a suica game and they immediately just like respond to the physics and the way it feels it's like that is what i go for in games and uh and th it's very difficult for uh the, the industry to undo what they've done with hey what matters is if a game looks like it's expensive like they're not going to really be able to undo that so we're kind of in a, a, a a, a hard place with those things but thankfully we still get a ton of games that are just all about feel and they're out there and you could find them if you want dave the diver sure can yeah. i ask you something is sweet a game just this watermelon thing yeah totally it's very simple and it's like a lot like mike played he's like i don't what's wrong with you people uh so it's like there's a lot of people that are like it's this isn't for me but i just think of the way it feels and like it's uh it's got a lot of juice it's just it's really i don't know pleasant and uh this this columns tetris thing Yes, basically. Yes, totally. I'm playing it right now. Oh well, you're probably not. You're probably playing the bad physics version of it. Are you playing? You got to play the one on Switch. Ah, oh, right. This is just SweakerGame.com. Like yeah, yeah. So that web. that has that has bad physics. It doesn't feel right. Ah, oh, okay. You, and that's a huge part of it. But hey, hey, if uh, it's three dollars on Switch, who knows? Uh, not everyone's going to be for it. But for me, it really hit. I might, I might try it. If that's how cheap it is, I might even try it because we've got a family Switch that has all the accounts set as that home console. Right. So no matter what we all buy, it's all that's a good way to do playable it. by it, all of us. And then um, you, you probably have enough like gold coins in your account where you're yes, like, probably you know, do. go get this for free. Yeah, yeah. I get gold uh, coins every this. time I redeem a Switch game that uh, Nintendo Me too. I was like, <laughs> I'm like, I have $40 in gold coins. Where, when does that happen? <laughs> I guess I, I have mostly been buying, buying my Nintendo games this year, but still. And good old Collingwood says, by the way, Nick, we haven't had Dim on for a while. Yes, we have. We had Dim on not that long ago, Modern yeah. Vintage Gamer. Like within the last 10 episodes? Uh, not Maybe not within the last 10, but we had him on fairly recently. Yeah, like last quarter of this year, for sure. Yeah. Uh, last question. Azubizu. Happy Grubsmas, everyone. Microsoft has a history in PC games, and I'm happy to see Microsoft digging into their backlog and bringing back old IP, e.g. Flight Sim, Age of Empires. Whoop, John's gone. Well, he messed up the look. Lost John. Oh, no. Um, I've got a two people for now. There we go. No, he's back. Nope. He's back. Fuck, he's, he's back. back. God there damn, we are. What did he, he refreshed what did you his. You refreshed your friggin' screen, didn't you? No, uh, I, I hit I hit this mouse button here that did the back on the page. Oh, sure, oh. yeah. My bad. <sighs> Um, yeah, Age of Empires, blah, blah, blah. Are there any IP from the DOS slash pre-Xbox era Get it. that you want to revive and make its way to console? Wishing a wonderful new year to all the listeners and their families. May the year ahead be the best one yet with many more better ones to follow. Ooh. I don't know enough Microsoft Give me Ski era. Free. Give me Ski oh, Free no. for early Windows. Can you imagine a modern yeah. day Ski Free? That would, that that would actually, actually be fantastic. Be cool. Yeah, really cool. yeah, yeah. Does Jesse know yeah. the music's playing right now? <laughs> I, I don't hear it. it. Well, I hear it. I don't hear it. That's really I, weird. Is your uh, just the whole on drugs? Is it playing you, in another window? Is your do you have the stream playing and it's like behind or something? No, nope. it's really weird. I that's can just weird. hear it on repeat right now for me. No, that's weird. That is weird. It's really weird. Right, uh, I think <laughs> I, I think you're high. Uh, it's possible. It's possible. There. Now yeah. turn it on. Now everyone Ooh. hears it. Yeah, there you Ooh, go. I can hear it. Yeah. yeah. Now turn off. But we do have a super um, chat as well. Yeah, I know, but we haven't answered yep. the question yet. Um, That's true. I don't know any DOS pre Xbox Zero games aside from. Give me from a new Encarta. Ski free. Encarta. I remember. Uh, what did I used to play on DOS? Uh, was it. Space uh, Quest, Police Quest. That's what some, I used to play. Something Ranger. Uh, RC Ranger. It was like. You were this guy parachuted in and you used to go up the screen and you had all these different yes. things. But I don't know if it was I remember Microsoft. That. I remember that. Um, but yeah, like, apparent, I don't know. I would love to see something in the MechWarrior universe from, like, it is in terms of a bigger game, like multiplayer, not not the current MechWarrior team. They own Space Quest and Police Quest now, don't they? They do. Through buying ABK. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, they would, yeah. So many. Uh, I would. Uh, I forgot. Microsoft did Pipe Dreams. I'll take Pipe Dreams. A new mm. one of those. That's uh No, I like your Ski Free idea. Ski Free would be great too, of course. Yes. I but think pipe, pipe, pipe Dreams is in free. every game already. It's like just the mini game for like unlocking something in the sewers or something like that. So Space could you Cadet? figure Remember out the a pinball new game? Minesweeper. Yeah, pinball game. Modern day. I, is Minesweeper still? So I love Minesweeper. I'm like me too. What about game. what about Hypercar? Was it Hyper Hovercar? Win ninety five Hovercar. Anyone? Remember that? It's hover. I mean, that that's weird not... Windows game. Sure, it's yeah. Hover. I think hover? I do. I think I do actually. Really now that I think about it. Hover yeah. exclamation. I looked it up. Yeah, hover exclamation. I definitely played yeah, this. Yeah. yeah. At like my aunt's house or I, something. I like Jeff's suggestion of ski free. I Let's reckon a really free. properly high quality done with good physics and everything ski free could be a lot of fun. A lot of fun. I do want to ask Jeff something though while we're talking about old IP coming back. Please. There's an old nintendo game it's actually a game and watch game and it's called climber not ice climbers this is just called climber and it was on a crystal screen game and watch which i still own to this day which i got in like 1986 and it was called climber and i feel like no one has heard of this and i wish nintendo would bring it back it would be a perfect switch game because it was a yeah, game and watch game i don't remember this one yeah i i, I did not Google play much game and watch Google Climber Game and Watch. Yeah, I'm looking at it now. It, it's like a burgundy colored little handheld sure, game yeah. watch with a crystal screen that you could see through. I've still got mine to this day. It's in really? the cupboard. That's cool. There. Yeah, I've still and I've got Donkey Kong Jr., which is the panoramic screen mirror one, where the game reflects onto a mirror and then back in front of you. And God, I used to love that shit. Yeah, the and I uh... wish Nintendo would bring back Climber. Mike thing just reset over here uh yeah I, I, they should do more with all these things all these classic like uh, game and watch things um i wish konami would bring back their uh their handheld teenage mutant ninja turtles game that oh, was like the tiger God. electronics thing i had, thing. That. I had, I that. had I that that every road trip for a very long time i have i had double dragon from tiger. yeah i had that too the double dragon yeah, mm. yeah for die the tiger double dragon and a few others yeah yeah Oh, I used to love those things, man. Those were probably so Christmas presents. Yeah. Yeah, they were probably my video game yeah. Christmas presents. Yeah. Oh, I just I feel like I'm getting Climber now to show everyone Climber. I sold my Mario one. I had Super Mario Brothers as the I was Christmas playing Whoa. Climber on the screen while you were talking. Ooh. Oh, were you? Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, I wasn't watching. Yes, Climber. I don't know. It's so simple, but so I don't know. It was just addictive. And the way they designed it, you could almost make a tune out of the sound every time you were jumping. And I just, I feel like it would be an incredible Switch game. Just remade in 2.5D with that tight Nintendo control and just, ah, oh, be great. <laughs> right, let's take Grub Come on. Come on. Super one chat. Super chat. That, 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 we that was the last question. Him. That super was the last chat. Question. Ah, uh, super chat, super chat. Christian five nine one six. I don't know if you guys talked about it, but based on Insomniac's leak, Spider Man Three is twenty twenty seven. Based on the X-Men IP terms, can we expect the Activision Spider-Man games on Game Pass after 2027? That was weird with the Activision thing. Someone was saying that based on those terms that they saw, those BC games can't happen on Xbox. Yeah, I I, I would doubt it. But I mean, I'd have to reread it. Uh, but when I, as I was reading it, that definitely occurred to me. Um, it would be very difficult for that to make sense uh, as it stands, because uh, it would that would count as a release, I think, against that, yeah. and that then that would not be allowed. It's like it's like with the whole Spider-Man as an extra character for the Avengers game, right? We were why isn't that coming in a? But it did come to Xbox. They, they, right? I think they said that no, that that they said that would be allowed, uh, but obviously mm. that was a separate deal for the Spider-Man exclusivity uh, for Avengers. But Spider-Man is a character in um, Marvel's Ultimate Alliance, Ultimate on, Alliance 3. on the Switch, a uh, three, mm -hmm. and they're like that is still allowed under this agreement. So oh, wow. yeah, and the the, yeah. the X Men could be the same thing. They can't be an X Men game, but if they are a part of something else, it can be okay. Right. Um. And yeah. I, I do wonder, like, would it be a thing where it can be made back compat, but you can't put it back up for sale? Like it, that, because maybe that's not a new release. Because yeah, that could that again. could maybe happen. Yeah, but that's like Batman that Arkham Origins is that way. You, you can yeah, that would have it, to but, be yeah. some kind of loophole, wouldn't it? Where yeah, you yeah. just say it's yeah, it's back. Pat, but then is it worth it, it for no, them no. because they can't make any money off of it? So what's the point? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Sometimes it's nice to just do nice things for not your in customers. business. Yeah, not anymore. We'll Sometimes see. it's nice. We'll see. They might figure something out. We'll see. I hope so. But, but there you That's go. It. 
That's it. It's the end of the show. Show Jeff stuck it out for the whole two yeah, hours and thank forty you minutes. So much. I got you. Absolutely. Thank of course. You so much. Uh, do you That's want me to great. go and let you two say like your goodbyes privately, or you know, oh, I don't want to step no. on any. No, of course you're all right. You're a thrupper. Our love is strong enough to withstand anybody's presence except for Mike Minotti. Fair, fair. <laughs> he's such a i mean he's beautiful so i understand why you get it you get why you struggle well, temptation yeah no one can yeah, carry yeah. off an arby's uh outfit like him <laughs> i did just find my arby's outfit i gotta i'm gonna wear that here pretty soon <laughs> all right well look uh it's yeah. it's it's christmas in like 48 hours so to everybody watching, have a great one if you celebrate yes. if you don't have a great weekend anyway happy, and happy enjoy the holidays, free bank holidays. Whatever yeah. you celebrate. Yeah. Yep. And Jeff, thank and, you. And look for me. Of course. For Thanks me for having on, me, guys. On uh, Games Miss Jeopardy, probably sometime soon, I reckon. Yep. We'll get you back on there early next year. I'm looking forward to that. I enjoy it. would be great. Yep. Definitely. Awesome. Yep. And uh, Nick, Jesse, and I will be back before the new year for the last episode yes, of, of 2023 uh, next weekend. Until then, stay safe, be good to each other. Yes. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you next time. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs>